Welcome back, employees, to the lucky die in Kino. Previously, Aron finds someone's Achilles heel. Iris hears a final goodbye, and Gref takes them to his local drinking hall. After the Kino Initiative Task Force 10 received new orders, the group found their intended target and the target's son. Having regrouped with a somewhat pensive Adnilov, Iris's new glass eye becomes fused to his skull as Savras dies. Will Thysia's child reveal all? How did Baracus know about the end of the world? And what has Savras seen that requires Iris to have such luck? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die in Kino. Last we left you, you had all been thrown to the ground. You, uh, Ivaris, had received a variety of random visions, uh, heard the dying words of a god, and then you all came to as blood began to, began to fall from the sky. What do you guys want to do now? Uh, well, if I recall correctly, there was a shining bright light coming from Ivaris's Nasty uh, eye socket. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Um, it is. It is still shining bright. It is dimming, but it is still pretty bright. Uh, Ivoris, the pain in your head is. Uh, it hurts. I mean, you did hear like a cry of a god. Um, that that will do things to you. Um, it hurts. You your eye socket where the. Uh, Relic of Savras, the uh, sorry, the the holy relic that was being used. Um, it, it burns and it's definitely melded to your flesh. You are not getting that out there any anytime soon without well, removing your skull. Well, um, shit. Yeah. Oops. So yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> what you get for sticking random yeah, things that in your eye socket. That should have been anywhere else but my eye in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But alas. But, you know, we got hit so hard because of that that we leveled up. So <laughs> You did. <laughs> you got hit so hard you leveled up. <laughs> I, again, again. No, Ooh. no. Just, just, you guys are at level four. Um, yeah, and you guys are coming too. Ivaris' eye is still glowing. Uh, uh, I want to I wanna say that Graf kind of put himself between, like, kind of the shockwave and uh, the goblin lady that hired us like kind of instinctively trying to put himself between her and the ex- explosion. And he's just yep, kind of... I'll take that. And he's just kind of like awkwardly getting up because he kind of put himself face forward towards the explosion. So he kind of just fell back on top of her. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you're coming to, you just want like, oh, Gref, get, get off. No, no, you're really too heavy. Gref, 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 darling. No. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> no. Uh, is, is, is everyone okay? What? <laughs> is... Have I gone color wrong, or is it raining red? No, Graf, that's... I I think, bud. Um, Iveris? What the fuck was that? Iveris is kind of, like, looking a bit dazed. Iveris? Uh, Iveris? Like, yes. Yeah, Iveris? Steps, too. <laughs> Graf is definitely licking at his hand if he's got this blood to rain on it. Okay, uh, Gref, darling, I don't think you should be licking that. How about, uh, Aron, we get Ivaris and Gref inside? Uh, yeah. Uh, Let's get them settled down with some sort of tea or something. Come on, Gref. I uh, she'll okay. grab Gref, take him inside. <laughs> Ivaris, let's go. Let's go. 
and like around like using his mechanical arm and kind of pushing <laughs> Ivers forward. Is this like you don't have to touch him? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like he doesn't know what just happened, so he's using the replaceable arm. He's kind yep. of pushing forward. I, I did just explode, apparently. <laughs> so, um, Adelov takes you um, to her private rooms. Um, you know she has all these things set up for all the various um, Kino Initiative Task Force, uh, yourself included. But she takes you to where she considers her domain, the place she wouldn't normally take anyone into. Um, even yourself or Ron, you've rarely ever seen the inside of her rooms. It's fairly lush. It's nice. There are a couple of like old antique style type chairs. Um, and she gets you all to settle down and... Uh, so, uh, please mind uh, mind the upholstery I don't really want to clean blood out of it uh, give me a moment I'll go make some tea and uh, she toodles off so uh, what the fuck was that well it tasted like blood so I think it was blood rain okay what caused the blood rain and for that matter the explosion Ivers Iris sits quiet for a couple more seconds and then without looking up Severus died. You hear the sound of China breaking as Adnov drops a cup. What do you mean died? I, that's a god. That Gods don't die. Yeah, that's your god. He, look, he looks up at you and just nods. <laughs> No, you, you you can't kill gods. It's the point of gods. I thought. Are you absolutely bloody sure? What? Are you absolutely bloody sure? I heard it. I saw things. Like what sort of things? And she comes over with one less cup than she'd meant and puts the tea. Tea, uh, tea set down. Pours, pours everyone some strong tea. Uh, Aron's going to go in the room where the broken teacup is and uh, wave his hand over it and cast mending. And then bring the other uh, tea, thank you, the teacup in. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's why you have me on What's... the payroll. Indeed. Um, what is it that you saw then? Um, Iris explains everything to her. Is this because Neil's forgotten? There was three figures flying from a bunch of... Uh, yes, uh, three people happened. together flying through darkness um, towards a lighter thing. You see these three essences coalesce into a pale yellow light and join the other lights in front of them. Basically, the gist of what you saw. Uh, does that mean anything to, well, any of you? Uh, certainly drawing a blank here. Well, there's three of us. Graf, I don't. I... There's one of her. You still got that kid and that lady around. The cleric. She and the boy are in the capital. Great. The boy has been. Uh, I don't know what she may have said to him, but he's been very forthright with what he knows. As to what will happen to him now. That is up to Baracus and his council to decide. Well, I should take a visit to the church. See if I can figure anything out. No, don't don't we have a job? Wait, am I misremembering? Iris looks well, over at um <laughs> uh, the goblin that I can't remember her name. Adnolov. Because I don't think I've said it out loud yet. Adnolov? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. You can call me Adna, it's fine. Adna, that's easy. Okay. Yeah. There you go. It's almost like The Incredibles or something. <laughs> almost. Do we have a job? Well, I had intended for you guys to act on some information that the boy gave us, but I think in light of, as she gestures at the blood stains you guys are now getting all over her wonderful furniture. I think perhaps Barakas and the council probably wouldn't mind if we took a few days to deal. Especially if your god Savras is dead. We need to confirm this. This will affect your 
powers, I assume. I didn't even think of that. Well, fuck. Because I know what Ibris would do. He would test it. <laughs> Hit me. Do it. Hit me. Hit, Hit me. you. Hit me. <laughs> No, I'm not going to hit you. I have. Is others. Gress saying this? Yes, when Gress realizes <laughs> that, like that, Ivaris is like kind of like looking at his hand, probably like thinking, like, "Wait, should I cast a spell?" Gress, like, "Yes, yes, hit me, hit me, <laughs> hit me with God magic. I want to feel it." <laughs> um, perhaps we can take this back outside. If you're going to be, oh well, the carpet's bloody ruined now. Go for it. And she just steps up, takes her cup, and takes a step away. Uh, uh, Aron, would you like to join me on the sane side of this room? Um, you know what? Uh, and just, just for the sake of, um, this is probably a really stupid idea. And uh, I assume there's a table or something in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Aron's just gonna pick up the table, turn it on its side, and just duck behind it and pull Adnolov behind it as well. <laughs> uh, she settles down comfortably behind. Okay, chaps, go. <laughs> we'll be right here if you need. As Gref is taunting me, Iris just rolls his eyes and he's like, I'm not going to fucking hit you. And he reaches over and casts protection from evil and good on you. Morning. <laughs> okay. Um, as you reach out to Savras to cast... All my spells are boring. <laughs> yeah. As you reach out to Savras to cast this spell, that familiar feeling of surety, of safety, of knowing what's going to happen, it's, it's, it feels wrong. It feels as if there's a hundred different, a hundred different threads that you're not used to. As if like, you know, someone's poured hot, boiling hot tea instead of coffee. It's, something's just not right in this delivery. Um, you do in fact feel, you're, are you casting this on yourself or on him? Oh, I'm casting it on him. Okay. I'm not as you reach out and fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> as you reach out and touch, uh, as you touch Graf, um, you see this like shimmering across his body as like you know a, an aura basically uh, protects and and uh, envelops him. Let's find out what happens when you cast this spell. Oh boy! <laughs> you feel a tugging at your at at your 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 jacket. The master wants gold. And as I you look, look down, there is this tiny, <laughs> tiny little dragony type creature. Um, it's kind of wearing like a like a little uh, set of dungarees. Um, it has a little little hat on. Um, one traditionally would would see them holding a candle, um, but in this case, they don't. Uh, as you see, basically a small kobold uh, looking up at you. Master wants gold. What? Ron pokes his head over the table. What the fuck is that? His spell didn't Adnolf, work. Like, comically puts her hands up on top of the thing that lifts herself over to look. You guys can see this small little kobold like clasping its hands in front of uh, in front of Ivaris. Master what gold? I can get Master Gold. What? Uh, I'm quite all right, thank you. Not you summon a kobold. I thought you were going to hit okay. me. I get Master Gold, and it, it oh, scurries fuck. out of the room. Um, I. What's what's that? Do we do we know what it is? Do we know Cole, Cole Walter? Take a take a history check, or a nature check, or anything that you could justify to me. Uh, Ivaris would. He is looking specifically at Adnalov, like he's confused as to like if that is something that should be here. <laughs> oh, he's hope. <laughs> He's hoping. Uh, he knows what it is. Iran got a 15 history check. Uh, that that will grant you the knowledge that this is in fact uh, a kobold. You've heard it in like myths and legends, and it has something to do with the dragons of yesteryear. But no one's ever seen one. Um, you're just going from rough descriptions. Uh, what did what did Gref get? Gref got a nine on a nature check. Yeah, he knows nothing. It's, it's a just a small, thing. weird little crazy. Yeah. Why'd you summon a lizard person? I didn't think you had that spell. I don't even I know don't. what that spell is. 
I don't. I didn't do that. Okay. I think, Rasa, I, I, I am officially calling your mission. I think that you should probably get pop yourself off down to the temple, darling. Um, uh, try and find out what's going on with your abilities. You can't be the only one stuff. Well, around. wait, hold on a second, because if you call off the mission, then how am I supposed to get more money for the workshop? Well, I think... Uh, I think that the fact that uh, possibly, you know, there is a dead god, the earth shook, and there is blood rain, there are things slightly more important than money right now. Uh, speak for yourself. Dead god to me makes well, no difference. Well, thankfully, it is my voice that matters in these opinions, uh, matters. So, uh, get yourselves off down to the temple, find out what's happened with your abilities, and uh, get confirmation that Savaras is, in fact, dead, and this isn't just some weird coincidence. Well, chop chop, please stop ruining my carpet further. I know a place that would probably take these furniture now that they're all ruined with blood. <laughs> or you could just get a wizard in here and clean it up. It's not uh, wizards ruining all the fun. I think all of you should go now. And she just basically starts to like <laughs> flap her arms at you just to get you out. And if you start resisting, she'll put a hand on your back and literally just like lean on you to get you. She's surprisingly forceful for such a tiny creature. Um, tell you about the guy you killed in the bar a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having this conversation again. <laughs> um, with that, you find yourselves outside of Adonov's rooms, uh, still in the mine. Uh, are you guys heading in anywhere particular or? Well, I've just lead the way since apparently we have to go do this shit now. Hey, V. Yes. Do I know where the church is? <laughs> yes, you would know where the temple is. <laughs> okay. Um, is that even a question? Yes, yes I dumb. probably haven't been there. You have been here. There's no way you couldn't have lasted two years or not visited the temple. I'm pretty sure I could have. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm pretty sure your now dead mentor would have forced you to go there at some point. Um, mm. Okay, you guys head on down to the temple um, and after various communications, conversations, which take a couple of days, the word does come back. There is in fact a dead god and it is in fact Savras. Um, you aren't the only person of faith who is suffering side effects of their divine magic being tampered with. Uh, the leading theory being that other gods are trying to step up to the plate, so to speak, and fill in the gap, but they are not having much success since there is a hole where Savras used to be. There is nothing filling it. They are trying their best, hence why magic is going fucking insane for clerics, paladins, divine sorcerers, divine warlocks, the such. And essentially that's... That's pretty much how things go. People don't want to talk. People are scared. You know, blood is being cleaned from the streets. Um, a lot of superstitious people are returning back to the temples that were once slowly being converted over to the ways of new technology are suddenly being brought back as people fear that the end is coming. Um, interestingly, Ivaris, during this week of unrest where people are unsure what's going on even government itself is going a little crazy no one seems to know what's going on you suffer more random visions it's not just a case of you had that big one and then it's gone if you are in the presence of something significant if you are in the presence of uh, a place that's important you touch an item that's important you touch a stranger's hand you sometimes receive visions you sometimes see things that you have no control over you see things such as uh, a temple hidden in a desert you see Adonlov greeping a huge female orc you see the faces of Aron and some dread creature with metal fangs billowing smoke from its nose you see those faces merge you see Baracus embracing his son who appears to be being puppeted like a marionette. You see the dead attacking a city you do not recognise led by a dark knight on a dark horse. You see a human woman pressing runes on a rectangular metal tablet. You see cylinders of metal flying through the air. You see Gref hugging a dark tabaxi woman. You see all of these random visions and you can't seem to stop or control them. 
but you are getting a grasp on how you think you can provoke these. And guys, that's basically a week. Nothing much really happens. Adonov does not call for you. She does not ask you to return until about seven days later when she calls all of you back to the mine and you find yourself sitting in the briefing room. Um, she's sitting on the desk waiting for you all. Uh, can I uh, say a thing, uh, make a suggestion? Mm-hmm. I like the idea of Gref and Aaron like walking in and Gref's going like, well, you see, like if he can't do his things, that's like his whole thing. That's like we trying to take you along without your gun. Like, why would we do that? That's why we haven't gotten a job. Your His gun has been broken for like seven days. <laughs> I wouldn't bring you along if you only had one hand. <laughs> I hope that makes. I hope that explains why things are like this. I, I know it's complicated. Aran's not saying anything, but you can see he has a hand firmly on the hilt of uh, the grip of his gun, and it is tightening. <laughs> Iris looks like he's been losing sleep, and he usually looks very fluffy and soft, and his hair is all very nice usually. But he just looks kind of like greasy, and like his hair is sticking up. He looks tired, like he just like rolled out of bed and his hair is a mess and it's everywhere and he looks Ooh. haggard. No luck fixing that gun, huh? I, I, you don't have to use the analogy, Gref. Oh, right. <laughs> Gref's trying to say you're having performance issues? Still? I'm fine. Are you, though? You don't look it. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Well, uh, before we get this meeting started, I have something that I think will help us a little bit with whatever missions we take on in the future. Ooh. And Iran pulls out three tiny little pieces that look like the size of a bean. Oh. Well, don't get so disappointed. You didn't even know what it is. It's so small. What can it even do? Well, put one, put this one in your ear. I'm not falling for that one again. No, actually, though, no. just put put that in your ear, and Aron's going to take one and put it in here, his ear as well. Graf accidentally follows your uh, lead. Iris, you too. Uh, while you were talking, Iris is cast in a sneaky way because I know he would uh, detect magic on it. <laughs> on it. On it, yeah. The bean. Okay, I need you, uh, as I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast, but I have mentioned to you guys, things like detect magic, I will always ask you to make an arcana check because there are some things that are higher level than what you cast it at, which are hidden from detect magic unless you roll high enough. Much like a dispel magic or a counter spell. Um, There are things that are protected, so uh, I need you to roll an arcana check, please. Uh, Okay, arcana's not a great one. Uh, that's it's fine. A six. That's perfect. The thing that uh, may or may not be hidden is may or may not be hid. Um, okay. You can see that the magic on these are are they augury divination. You can basically tell that they will allow uh, communication. Okay. Um, they don't seem to have any harmful effects. There's a slight forced nature about this magic. It's not like this magic is inverted commas natural. This was forced upon this object. It's much like spiky things being put into a very smooth hole. It's it's not perfect, but it, it'll do the job. Hmm. Okay. Was I able to hide casting that? Uh, they were too. I, I would say that unless they want to take make an active perception on you doing this. I mean, they were kind of busy. Uh, Gref was okay. busy annoying Ron, so. <laughs> Okay. And does anything blatantly obvious at the moment happen? And did the cobalt bring me back any gold? Jeez. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, the cobalt <laughs> brought you back. <laughs> the cobalt brought you back 156 gold. Hell yeah. What? <laughs> and I you have find so much out gold, guys. <laughs> and you find out through conversations during the week that Adam Love happens to be missing 156 gold. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, this kobold disappeared after two hours. <laughs> God, that was a busy kobold. <laughs> Transmutation is transmutation magic if you want to know real specifics. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's up to you. Are you returning this gold now you know where it comes from? I just put it on fine. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm just, That's I'm fine. just, he doesn't need I'm floating so the gold. idea <laughs> with your ridiculous amount of money that maybe you don't need the 156 gold. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. She's okay. Uh, she'll get her gold back. Um, does anything blatantly obvious happen now that would give away that I've uh, cast a spell? Yeah, I guess I better, huh? I knew that there wasn't anything bad on the damn thing. I just know that Ivers has trust issues. Uh, you would also see that Adam Lawson, um scarf has uh, magic on there also. <laughs> Illusion. Uh, but you would know this to be, yeah, it allows her to mm-hmm. appear invisible. Um, which makes no sense, but you know what I mean. Or invisibility is that illusion? Yep, possibly. Would you get a six? Uh, on my Arcana roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. What I rolled in the d twenty. Oh, yes. yes. Well, uh, not in the roll twenty. Yes, a six. Um, um, you look at Adnolf. Um, and you just get this distinct feeling that you are going to be able to talk to her in her natural language. You can understand and speak Goblin for 24 hours. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to know if that he'd be able to call me out on casting Detect Magic, but he can't. So uh, that is fine. Uh, Ivers nods and uh, good, uh, good work. And he puts the little thing in his ear. Aron just takes a finger and holds it up and says, and now you can all hear me when I talk. Right. And it just kind of goes straight into your ear instead of it sounding like it's coming from the room. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, because it's funny to me, that you actually have to touch it to transmit message. <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise, if you just talk, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah I'm going to say that if you put your finger to your ear, you can be surreptitious about it, but if you put your finger to your ear and like mumble, you can get away with casting it without being noticed. Um, apart from people who are really fucking eagle-eyed. Um, so I will just... I will oh, sorry. I, I had the itch on my ear. Oh, it was super itchy. Yep, yep. Uh, I'll allow this. It's fine. Um, I guess you guys are eager to get on with another job, eh? I need money. I have a project. Oh, really? Well... What are you uh, planning on building next? Classified. Bigger beans? <laughs> From me, darling. Really? <laughs> Aron just gives a uh, sly grin. Very classified. Yes, sure. Uh, everyone, everyone, please sit. Uh, take a take a place. Um, right, this job. Uh, Ivory, are you a hundred percent sure that you can? I'm fine. <clears throat> okay then. Well, if things go awry, then I'm. Uh, uh, then please let me know as soon as possible. We will. We will make it through this one way or another. Right. So uh, your. Your task. We spoke with uh, the tabaxi woman and the boy. The boy was exceptionally helpful in coming forward with various pieces of information. Um, We learned more information about the assembly. The assembly used to be comprised of uh, six different branches, um, but now it is a single cohesive unit with a single purpose to bring down our government, which uh, clearly we do not want. He knows about this uh, assembly of thinkers. Um, Based on his information, we believe that this particular branch, the assembly, um, they will be... uh, They are planning another attack, um, specifically on the capital this time. We split the task into two. uh, Kit 7 is going to be locating the assassin known as... Well, we only really know her as Princess Boo and her charge, uh, only known as the book. And Kino Initiative Task Force 10 will be in charge of collecting the item that uh, is of great importance to them uh, before the assembly can get it. They are looking for Ogma's, I hope that's some pronouncing that right, Ogma's fabled blank scroll, uh, their relic, most ancient relic of their god. Uh, it will be up to you guys to find this. 
and stop them from getting it. Afterwards, of course, you may be responsible for dealing with Princess Boo and her charge, but uh, for now, you guys will be looking for this relic. Now, a slight issue on this is that we have no bloody clue where to look or even where to start, so this is going to be part of your mission also. Any any questions, anything you wish to ask that I can potentially help with? What is the source of the information? Uh, the boy. How much are we getting paid? This seems like a difficult job. Uh, yes. Um, we will increase the fare for this one. Uh, I'm authorized to give you each 400 gold on a successful return of the relic. Okay. But of course, any mission expenditures will have to come out of this as well. Oh. So, bar tabs, Gref, will also have to come out of that 400 gold. It was... Mm. Uh, she kind of like looks over her glasses at you. <laughs> We've had this conversation 20 times now. Uh, one of these times, hopefully it will sink in. Uh, I accept the council's decision, but it is a dumb decision. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gref. Uh, so... I don't really know where to start with, gentlemen. Um, well, it seems magic-y, so... Uh, Aaron, you've heard of this thing before? Have I? Uh, take a religion check. In fact, you all can. Oh. It's common-ish knowledge. I mean, graphic uh, might be slightly difficult, but... 15 religion. <laughs> 10. <laughs> I rolled the 19, so 21. Damn. <laughs> Gref and Aron, you would know that um, the signal, uh, the symbol of Ogma, the god of knowledge, is a blank scroll. This is kind of what you're looking for. Ivaris, your knowledge is more based around Savras. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the god of knowledge isn't really a thing. No. <laughs> Are you not proficient at religion? <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> it was just a roll. <laughs> That was very low. Um, <laughs> out of plus four, come on. Plus okay. four is pretty good. That's an sure. intelligence thing. Sure, sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say. Mm-hmm. All right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Griff, Griff, Griff in particular I'm would know that, <laughs> that, know that the uh, blank scroll is a symbol of Ogma, yeah. Well, like, there's holy symbol? Like, are, are we talking about, like, it's, like, equivalent to, like, um, pfft, Pelor's son, like it's the signal of that? Yes. Okay. Uh, that seems very hard to find. Very, very hard to find. Where do, do, is there a church to this person in town? Uh, yes, down in Silvana, there is a, there is a church of Ogma. You, you probably could start there. Um, the best guess that the council came over is probably hidden in some sort of library. Um, oh, that's about it, really. Can it not be hidden in a gladiatory, gladiatory pit? I think that the god of knowledge probably wouldn't put his prized possession uh, in a pit, mm. a gladiatorial pit, where it could be damaged by weapons. But uh, a good thought for it being protected there, Graf. And she kind of like gives you. A really patronizing, like, pat on the shoulder. <laughs> Just saying, you never sent us to gladiatory pits. Well, maybe in your future, perhaps we'll arrange for such a thing. All right. Any idea what this item is capable of? Uh, to be honest, I have no idea. The religion is not particularly my forte, and finding... The relic, which this god is uh, famed for having, you know, is known as their crest. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. I would expect probably a blank scroll. Um, I don't. I personally don't know anything more than that. Um, your best bet would be talk to a priest or a cleric, um, paladin, if you can find one. Um, I mean, if you give me a day, I might be able to track down a a source if I only just got back from the capital myself, so. Um, No, no, we'll go to the church. We'll figure this out. Our job. 
And if so happens that the person tells us it's in a pit somewhere, we'll go there. And if it's in a library, they'll go over there. Read. Yes, if uh, if this most sacred relic happens to be in a gladiatorial pit, I'm pretty sure you're going to knock that one out of the park and return it to us. Right. Either way, you're going to return it to us. Um, no particular time limit on this one, but uh, they seemed rather... Prom- uh, they seemed rather intent on getting it. Um, it would appear that the assembly are already making tracks to find it. So the boy says. Then we better get moving. All right. We'll let you know if we have trouble. Of course. Uh, uh, check back in on your... Uh, when you found out uh, any information... Um. I'm actually going to be taking off tomorrow afternoon, so if you can check back with me before then, that would be fantastic. So, you're taking off. I'm. Uh, I have a. Uh, she like tilts her head to one side and like begins to scratch the side of her neck. She says, "I have a mission of my own. It's nothing important. Just a uh, just an errand. I would prefer to do with myself." I swear to Christ, I'm holding this one back. I want Graf to look at her and go like, if you're going to the gladiator pit alone, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Graf, I, uh, she reaches over and grabs like your ginormous hands <laughs> in her own, her tiny little goblin hands, and she looks you dead up, looks up dead into your eyes. She says, Graf, darling, honey, if uh, if one were to engage in a, in a in a conflict I and I find myself in a gladiator pit there truly is no one I'd rather be there with me than you you are my number one for getting stuck in an arena pit and she kind of like taps you gently on the face you're not just saying that no you can inside if you want <laughs> <laughs> no Graf wants to believe that how often could She's that being possibly honest. happen to where that's a thing that you uh, I, I, I risk I risk to st- just let him have this one. <laughs> All right, let's go to a church. I can't believe I just heard you say that, but yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, with that, you guys make your way down to uh, Shavana. It doesn't take long to find uh, the temple. You get hand waved through security as per normal because of your badges. Um, yeah. The streets here, the the walls, the uh, of the buildings are some of them are still stained red, especially down at bottom. Um, it's it's a grim looking city right now, um, a place which is normally full of hope and joy, um, and of course, you know, downtrod masses. Um, it's, it's it's a dark, sad place right now. Um, there are a lot more people visiting the religious temples than there have been for quite a while. Um, People flocking to religion in a time of need. And of course, the opposite being true, people flocking to the alehouses in times of need. Um, you see all sorts. In the church of Ogma, the temple itself, um, it very much feels like a library. Um, there are bookcases that line the wall filled with various tomes, uh, nothing too expensive, nothing too insightful, um, as far as you would think. Um there are places that are well lit with candles so that they could see. There are floating orbs of light. Um, up ahead, you can see that they have installed a mechanical device that allows the changing of books that are held down in the vault. So the uh, head cleric is there talking to some people and you can see him at one point um, encant something and a different book gets taken down and another one brought up. Uh this seems fairly standard here. Um, this is what you have. There's probably about half a dozen people here. You can see the head cleric. Uh, the head cleric is a tabaxi um, with dark orange fur and bright, bright green eyes. Um, they're wearing the regalia of Ogma. Either of you like to do the talking? Aron just starts walking towards where the uh, book delivery system is. <laughs> yep. Just doesn't say anything. He just starts making a beeline for it. Graf just looks at Iris and kind of like points to himself, like, huh? Huh? <laughs> Iris shakes his head no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and goes up himself. 
Oh. Come oh, on, mate. come on. Oh. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> come with me. <laughs> Graph follows. Oh my god. Um, Avron, this is uh, it's pretty crude. Um, at least this section up here, it's not like well maintained. You can hear like the grinding gears. There's something not quite right in here. No one's quite set this properly. With a little bit of TLC, this could be smooth as a. As uh, smooth as a duck on water, um, but it's not quite. Uh, however, it's it functions. Um, you would, exp- you know, you can't see the inner workings of it uh, below ground level, but you would assume it goes down to a vault where a bunch of books are. Um, it sounds and looks pretty comprehensive. It's a piece of pretty complicated machinery. And you said that there's the head priest is in front of it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, Irish, you you stroll up. Uh, not sidetracked by the mechanical device with uh, with Griffin. So, um, yeah, you you can approach this this high high cleric, high priest. Good evening. May I help you? We were um, we're looking for a relic. Uh, what kind of relic do you seek, my child? Griff, go ahead and you know what we're looking for. Breath, like, like, kind of has this like kind of smug smile, like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I got this. <laughs> um, you, you've been given one shot. Don't blow it. Good <laughs> moment. Hello. We seek the artifact of Akma's blank scroll. And he does like a little like eyebrow wiggle once he says that. Good job, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the cleric turns to look at you. Um, you can see like the the whiskers are are twitching a little bit. You're seeking Arkma's blank scroll. Is there an echo in here? Yes. Uh, while this conversation is going on, Aran just pulls out his tinker's tools and just starts fixing the delivery <laughs> system. <laughs> Because he's that neurotic hearing like the grinding gears that he's just like, this is fucking terrible. Hold on a second. Starts like, it just goes in and starts trying to fix shit. I'm, I'm going to say that the high cleric is uh, distracted by well, Griff and Ivaris. Um, they're, they're a lot to handle in one go. Um, the cleric turns back to Ivaris and says, um, what? Are you on some sort of holy quest to find the scroll, or...? Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. Well, I'm a bit torn up about it, actually, but, uh... It, it, Iris, like, reveals his holy symbol. I guess his yep. eye now? Uh, up his yes. eye patch? Yeah. Gross. Uh, you might have heard the recent news... We think that these relics are what puts the gods in danger. And we were looking to find them, to bring them to the church that it belongs to, to be more carefully looked at because it is being hunted by the people who we believe killed the other god. Sure. Take a yeah. Take a, take a deception check. I'm, I'm you not gonna knew lie. what I was gonna do. <laughs> Ivers would have been able to lie better than Neil, but Neil was struggling hard. <laughs> I'm gonna need a uh, yeah. <laughs> you know this is an audio podcast where you cannot talk and just think for a second, right? Uh, <laughs> but what's the no? Fun? It's funnier what's this the, way. Yeah. What's I, the fun in that? I need I need a deception check. Is this please. a very scripted podcast? No. By the way, clearly uh, not. By the way, that is an 18 deception. Jesus. So I just did a better job of reciting it and making his thoughts sound like questioning whether he's giving information more so than he's thinking. The cleric what. does not see your see through your uh, very thinly disguised lie. Um, he 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 nods and says, um, uh, "The scroll itself is." Um, the last we heard, it's it's out in the desert somewhere. Um, you need to travel to a market village called Symphona. 
which is S Y M F O N A. Um, it's a place just on the edge of the wastes itself. They should have uh, a better source of information as to where it is. We only know ourselves here in the humble temple here in Shavana that it's in the desert and in a library that is long since lost. Perhaps them being closer, they would have more information. I do warn you, the scroll itself is said to have interesting powers and that the place is guarded by some very very powerful magics that uh, see through lies and disguises. I'm going to incite him. Okay. Ah, fuck. (laughs) Twelve. What are you trying to incite? Whether he's giving us false information. You believe he's being truthful? Okay. So, we have to go to Symphona now. How far away is that? Like, a day in a carriage? Two days? Absolutely not. Um, Oh, it's shorter. Hang on. Uh... (laughs) No. Um, uh, they walk over to the now in somewhat ruins as uh, as as Ron is trying to fix this item. Um, roll the tinker check for me. All right. Um, with which stat? Uh, I'd say sleight of hand. Okay, so it's a dex. So that's uh, double proficiency for your tinkerous tools. Yep. Uh, 17. Oh, yeah, like the top section that you can actually get to now runs sweet as a nut. You can hear a lot of clanking and uh, imbalances further down in the system, but you physically can't get to those. This top section, you are you are confident, will run for at least 100 years. Everything below this, you cannot guarantee it because you didn't work on it. <laughs> Ron's head, like, pops out from, like, under... I imagine, like, he was laying on the ground, like, underneath the system and, like, yeah, pulls yeah. <laughs> out and goes, you know, the system up here, really good now. I fixed it for you. Um... You really should hire better people for this sort of thing. I would expect better from a temple of knowledge. Whoever did this was not very good. (laughs) Well, we can only employ the people we can afford and not many people wish to do work for a temple such as ourselves at such a low rate that we can barely afford now. Uh, Attendance hasn't been as high as this and indicates like the six or seven people in here other than yourselves. Hasn't been this many in quite a few years. Well, the top part here is fixed. I did that shit for you because it was pissing me off, honestly. Um, everything underground, though, sounds like total shit. Right. I appreciate your help uh, as best as you are able to, at least with this section. Um, I mean, perhaps later on, to so not this is irrelevant, I'm, I'm helping these lovely gentlemen here first. Um, Matt. And the gears and everything begin to click and twist and turn. The book that was coming up there begins to go down like slowly, like ee. And you hear like the clunking below and it gets really loud and it sounds like things are about to fall apart. And then it comes up and then it, as soon as it hits like above level ground, it just it goes really smoothly, almost silent running. Um, and before you, there is a map. Um, it would appear to be 14 days walking. It's in a south, as you can see on this map here, it is in a south east position. Uh, right on the edge of the, um, on the waist of Tis Ermu, which is T I S apostrophe A I R E M O U. Uh, the waist of Tis Ermu are the, uh, in the center of Kino is a really big, desolate, sandy wasteland, much like the, uh, it's basically too hot to live there. Um, people do and people try, many nomadic tribes, uh, Yunti are well known to be there, um, or at least they were. Uh, there used to be civilizations there, but not anymore. Not really, anyway. Not that mo- Not that people of your uh, city living would know. <laughs> it's a bit like that. For- fourteen days on a horse. That would probably be like. No, no. Fourteen days walking. Um, if one were to take a horse, you could significantly decrease that time. No, I think we're not. Why can't we just beat up more women for the amount of gold we got last time? Oh. Um, excuse me. And like every single person in this temple goes still <laughs> and turns to look at you. Ivers turns still and look at you. <laughs> I mean, praise the Lord. Oh, dude. Uh, you see the cleric just like gesture 
to some of the temple guards. Um, these are some pretty beefy looking... Uh, oh my God, I have things for these. I have these people. Wait, you had plans? Uh, would... You see this... We would cause no, a commotion. No, I, I have plans for what the people are in here. Um, you see this really like beefy looking tall who has a deep green and purple shell. Um, and you see this uh, white and black tabaxi. Um, and this doesn't look doesn't look quite so beefy, but it does look really annoyed and really quick. Um, and they basically make their way over to you, Gref, uh, and they basically look back at the cleric who just gives them a nod, and they grab you by the shoulders and drag you out. Are you resisting? There's a shit eating grin on Gref's Gref's face. <laughs> Oh my god! Aron's gonna intercede and just be like, "Um, uh, okay, you know what? No, 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 Aron, it's it's fine. No, Graf, it's, it's no, fine. you have a look. No, it's gonna no. be fine. No, Graf, we have a job to do. I'll be back in however many days with two horses. It'll be quick. We're leaving. <sighs> Aron turns to the head priest. <laughs> Thank you for your time. We'll talk later about." fixing the rest of your system. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, he turns to look at Ivaris. Uh, I would also greatly appreciate if uh, he points over to Gref, who is now being led away. Um, um, perhaps that one doesn't return. Yeah, look, he, he's just not good at talking. Uh, and Ivaris flashes his badge. That, <laughs> that scroll, if we can find it, I mean, it's in good hands. No worries. Um, you happen to have a book or anything with more information on these whereabouts or the um, thing I'm, itself? Um, I'm afraid not, no. Um, I pretty much told you everything we know here. All right. Uh, good luck in finding it. I'd be very interested, of course, to see it when you bring it here, but we may not necessarily keep hold of it. We are. And gestures at like the, the temple and the clanking of the gears underneath. Uh, we may not be the best ones to hold it. The capital may be better to keep it secure, but um, I'd be definitely very interested to see it if you do bring it back here. Uh, we just retrieve things, really. It's uh, in greater hands than ours once we get it back of course um, just a just a humble scribe's curiosity I guess oh. good luck and blessings upon you my son sure and I am again very sorry for your loss and indicates uh, Severus Severus gives him a nod and uh, turns around to leaves alright uh, two of you managed to walk out of here with some of your dignity intact. Um, the other one did not. <laughs> Graf, one hundred percent is like, like, oh yeah, 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 you're big guys now that I'm on the clock. But I'll, I'll see you at the Leaky Barrel at the turn of the month. I'll see you there. <laughs> don't go to the Leaky uh, Barrel. They don't. Right. They on. do not disdain to talk to you. They look down their noses at you, um, and they turn around. The turtle presenting its shell, uh, you know, except to find something. And, you know, basically putting itself between you and his beloved church, and they go back inside. Don't don't make me have to come back here. If you guys don't yeah, show Gref. up, if you guys Gref. don't show up, I'll find you. Graf, we're leaving. Fine, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Graf, you okay? We'll we'll, fi- we'll find something else on the way, right? <sighs> oh my good lord! Graf a- oh. looks agitated that he had to hold back. <laughs> All just right. wants to beat something up. Well, we should uh, prepare to leave. Either tonight or tomorrow. We should let them know where we're going. And we should move out. Yeah. Uh, do you guys want to start moving tonight? Or do you want to do it in the morning? I mean, it's barely midday, I think. Well, it turns out that I can see in the dark. Because I lied about it last episode. <laughs> I do have dark vision. <laughs> Oops. <sighs> hey guys, don't yell. I'm bad at this. Yeah, everyone listening to this knows that by now. <laughs> they expect these things. All right. They knew as soon as I said it. Uh, it's just Neil. He'll fix it later. He'll bring it up later. <laughs> He'll fix 
fucking edit. <laughs> He'll fix it and edit, except the episode already went out. So that's why I'm saying it now. Um, yeah. And also tigers don't have striped eyes. So <laughs> irises slitted pupils are very suspect. <laughs> yeah, doubly UNT. Double, double suspects. You would have to. Yeah. As a person, you are suspect. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there goes a lot going on. Okay. Uh, 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 such a sick burn. Okay. Yeah. Um, where are you guys headed to? Uh, back to the mine, I guess. Just to reporting with Adnalov that we're apparently fucking off for like a month straight. Okay. Cool. Uh, you guys go back and do you find Adnalov? Um, yeah. Just say it's like the other side of of midday. Um. And as as you get there, she she's in her like private area, so she you know she decides whether she wants to come out and talk to you. And she you know it's probably a, a good hour before she comes out and speaks to you. Um, you can attempt to interrupt her and listen in if you want, but uh, if you're granting her her privacy, then we'll move on. I'm telling you, if one of you would have just distracted the tabaxi, I could have taken that guy easily. No, you know what? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting for the hour, Aran's going to go down to his workshop and grab uh, just a few small pieces of like some wood, uh, a few springs, some rope. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, he's going to try to work on a stupid little thing. (laughs) When you walk away from Graff, he puts his fingers to his ear like, don't ignore me. You know I'm right. (laughs) No, no, I'm not. I'm going to work on the presents for you. I got it. Ooh. Um. Yes. Yes. You may work on a thing. All right. Uh. So I'm gonna take a liberty here, and he, you just tell me what's gonna have to happen. Yep. Uh. Iran wants to make a little. I don't want to call it a catapult, but like a miniature thing that you can put like a rock on, and it'll launch it straight up in the air, kind of like th- like those baseball uh, launchers that launches the ball up so you can hit it. Uh huh. And he wants to make it where, like, you can step on it and it'll release a spring so that, like, a rock can be launched up so that Gref has something to punch. <laughs> that's. I'm going to say that's, uh. That's not a massively complicated thing to do. Uh. It will take you literally a whole hour and I'm going to make you roll a, a tinker check for it. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that's why I made this character. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a inverted commas easy check uh, because it will take literally a whole hour of like concentrating to make this thing. Uh, mm-hmm. There are there are yeah okay do it. Um, it's, the check's not easy, but we'll we'll give it a shot. What stat am I using for this one? Uh, argue something. Um, I would say it's probably because it's small pieces. It's probably a dexterity style. All right, go for it. Uh, it's only a twelve. Not so great. I rolled a four. It's uh, you think it's gonna work? Uh, you reckon there's probably a good couple of uses in there. It will distract him for maybe an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I can always right. work on it later, make it better. Yeah, yeah, you can work on it later, but you have a basic thing. It will probably, it will probably, a current use of Gref using it will probably be an hour. You using it maybe two, but okay. Gref, about an hour. So then okay. Iran comes back after the hour and is just like, here, Gref, I made you something that'll keep you distracted. I mean, uh, entertain you. <laughs> uh, Gref, Ivaris, are you listening in on Adnalov's conversations or are you giving her her room? Not particularly. Ivaris just looks like he has a headache all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gref's around. Yeah. Gref, Gref wants to listen in. <gasps> uh, take a take a perception check. Boop, 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 boop. Bump. That's a natural 20 to a 25. <clears throat> wow. Oh, fuck my life. So All right. What have I rolled tonight? A 20, a 19, and a 20. Damn. I'm rolling low. Roll 20. Can, uh, can we talk? <laughs> no, I'm no. Le- leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> roll, roll 20. I want to talk. Um, you hear her making conversation with uh, another goblin. Um, no, let's make it a bit easier for you. Uh you hear her making conversation with a drow. Uh, they're speaking in common. When I say common, uh, I generally mean Kino common and Discora common. They are different things as a heads up. So That's racist. It's the fact that the continents haven't spoken to each other for 5,000 years. That does yeah. a thing to a language. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're talking in uh, Kino common. Um, 
and you get the understanding that she is arranging for transport to the Orkath Isles. Um, she is wanting to speak with some of the orcs there to confirm a suspicion. Uh, the drow agrees to transport her without anybody else knowing, so he would be the only one that will know she's aboard his boat as she as he smuggles her to the Orkath Isles. Um, on your motherfucking natural 20, um, you find out that she is going to be speaking, uh, she's aiming to speak to a name that you recognise, uh, the name being Helsif, yep. and that she from there is then looking to move on to talk to Gorth, who is the head of all the orcs on the Orkath Isles. That's the information you get. Oh, Graf's pissed. She's literally going to the fighting aisles without him. Uh-huh, uh-huh, right, yeah. Uh-huh. Can't fucking believe um, this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> About an hour later. Uh, Jesus effing Christ. Um... <sighs> Aron, you come across a rather uh, flummoxed, annoyed, angry-looking Gref, um, and a rather pained-looking Ivoris. Um, gotcha. So Aron walks up and puts this little contraption down that looks kind of like a miniature catapult in a sense, and puts it down in front of Gref and just says, here, I brought you something that should help with... Uh, and Aron kind of gestures to all of Gref. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you bought me a, a puzzle. You know I don't like puzzles. No, no. For one, I didn't buy it. I built it. And two, it's not a puzzle, you idiot. <laughs> Watch. Hold on. And Aron reaches down, grabs just like a rock that's on yeah, the ground. Yeah, that's in the Yeah. Puts it on top of the little loading platform on it and says, all right, there's a little petal right there. Okay. Step on it. Graf steps on it. Pebble shoots in the air. <laughs> Now punch it. And it just falls to the ground. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, you were talking to me. Okay, yeah. Uh, again, again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so and Ron shows Graf how to load it and then fire it. Uh, Graf punches, <laughs> punches it this time. It's like, oh, God, I want to hang up with some orcs right now. What? 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 Do it again. Do it again. Uh, sorry, what's that, darlings? No, what? Uh, okay. I'm what? glad to see you're all, all back. Uh, have you found any news? Uh, I found out where they're keeping the scroll. Oh, you did? No, wait. Yes, no, that yes, wasn't it was me. All graph. <laughs> yeah, he did fine. Uh, we need to go uh, to... It's, 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 it's in the desert somewhere, probably, I think. The wastes of... Uh, Tisserm... Tisselmu. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the land of the Race French. Of Tisselmu. It's Greek, actually. Tisselmu. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they said. It's, 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 <laughs> it's all Greek to you. <laughs> it's all Greek. No, no, no. We need to go to Symphonia. Symphona. We need to. Uh, we need to. We need to talk to the priests there. They probably know more. We have to travel for a very long time. Business expense, you know. Yes, coming out of uh, your final wages, of course. Um, um, well, yeah. okay. See, hold on. So about that. Um, see, here's the thing. Uh, that's a month-long trip you're asking for. Well, actually, uh, if you take the horses, uh, that will take you somewhere between six, seven, eight days, and six, seven, eight days back. That's uh, two weeks, by my reckoning, is it not? I don't like horses. I know, but of course, you could, uh, of course, be paid for a month or be paid for two and a bit weeks. I mean, uh, uh, the pay is the same. Horses are better than a boat, (laughs) he says, just looking at her. (laughs) (laughs) Are you giving her that same wide-eyed look you're giving me right now? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Graf wants her to know that he knows that she's going to hang out with a bunch of orcs. Uh, Graf, is there something in your eye? Yes, just a a corn of betrayal. I mean, sand. (laughs) Now, normally, Griff, I feel like I want to indulge your whims, but uh, I feel right now you probably have a a bigger fish to fry. Mm -hmm. Um, Right, of course. Um, uh, Horses, yes, we can uh, can arrange horses for you. Um, In fact, I... 
I know a guy who can get you some horses. Uh, you'll have to pick them up at midnight from uh, the jetty just north of here, but I can arrange them to be here in time. Uh, is there anything else you guys require? Travel rations, the usual, I guess. Yes, yeah, sir, of course, sir. You know where the barter is. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you two go get supplies? I'm going to t- grab uh, some scraps and such just to bring with me so I'm not bored out of my fucking mind. Uh, well. All right, I'll uh, I get these. Oh, you, know, you gentlemen can see me off on my uh, on my trip. Uh, I'll lead you through the mines north to where the jetty is and then I'll, I'll depart ways there. Uh I'll catch up with you a bit later this evening. And uh, she wanders back into her quarters. All right, so some of you are going to go get rations, supplies, and scraps, correct? Yes. Yep. Yes, and Ivers is going to run home real quick. Uh, <laughs> how far did we say your home was? I live in town, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that home. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I thought you were going back to your manor. <laughs> well, Yeah. Your live. manor is just outside of Silvana. Oh yeah, Ivaris is a grown-up. Actually, takes some time together. How homeowner. far away is that? Why does he have a manor? Just, I think well, Graf, Graf lives in a ditch somewhere. You live in a bar. <laughs> with you the do. Dead people. You know which bar you live in as well. Clearly, the leaky bucket. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, would describe the leaky bu- bucket as a ditch. <laughs> A glorified ditch. Um, <laughs> let me find out how far uh, it is. I thought I lived like right in town. No, uh, your manor is outside of town. It actually takes a little bit of time to get there. Okay, well, it wouldn't fine. it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility for you to have a small a small home here in in Shaw Manor. Um, oh, sure, I can do that too. Yes, it's about a day outside. Fuck. Okay, yeah, it's a I big place, sure dude. Like it's like a manor with like grounds and everything, my man. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so Ivers would have just taken. He would be carrying like an extra bag with him. He just okay. has since things at the manor have gone south. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when he, yeah, anytime he leaves for more than a day, he packs uh, more of his things than usual, just in case he goes back and finds the manors moved into or something, or you know. Since it's uh-huh. kind of in a state of stasis of ownership, I don't know what the fuck. And so he has all of his money and all of his extra clothes with him. All his um, fancy in, stuff. In in all of the chaos that's happened over the last uh, basically ten days since you and your mentor had a somewhat fateful encounter at the end of your uh, end of your weapon, um, no one has really been to check in on him. You don't believe that your murder has been discovered. Uh, the plans and steps you took to. Uh, hide his remains uh no oh, one has hidden. discovered or come back um they weren't hidden yes be. yes the things you have done um basically yeah all the things you've done to h- cover up and hide what you did um none of those have been discovered yet no one's gone <gasps> sacre bleu he's been murdered uh like <laughs> Why is everybody no French one is aware himself? of this yet well i mean everyone knows he's dead left to their own devices they wouldn't have found it yet but if you're saying that you told them then fine that's okay yeah they they yeah they yeah. No, it, in which it's case known it that would he's be dead by at least the authorities. <laughs> um, yes, in 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 that case, yeah, like no one's begun a proper investigation yet, basically, um, because of all the shit that's gone down. Um, right. Like they've literally had the death of a god to deal with. Uh, one one backwards priest is not of their concern right now. Okay, um, but yeah, the the state of the manor is un, uh, question mark. Uh, I don't know how you guys claim it in America but we have like the it's not uh, it's not owned by anyone yet because it's still under the effects of the will um, owned by the dead guy but the dead guy's property hasn't been like dealt with yet I think you call it furlough I'm not really sure so that being said no heat on you yet (laughs) Uh, yes you can carry a bunch of extra bags that's not a problem yeah you know I have a bag of holding right Uh, I don't care (laughs) (laughs) He wants his own bags, you know. Like it's cooler. dumb. It is. I have a it is dumb. Bag. To, <laughs> yeah. and it is dumb to put all of your stuff in a single bag because if that bag gets broken or destroyed, you've lost all your shit. And also, it's um, worse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've gone to go get a bunch of things. Uh, you have got a bunch of uh, scraps from your workshop, and Griff is getting some food. So is there anything food. else you guys are doing? Well, I assume you're getting more than is needed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Graf is also um, 
getting like extra water skins and stuff like that says we're traveling through a desert. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. And he's probably also thinking about like how to travel through a desert right now, like what kind of clothes or whatever he should bring. Yeah, it seems like a rough thing to do. Wonder what he's gonna wear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you probably would know. Being that you've traveled through desert areas before, yeah. you would know the kind of stuff that you would need to wear and take and bring. Um, so yeah, you're you're logisticing for the first time ever. Um, <laughs> logistics for the team. All right, cool. Um, anything anyone else is doing before Anne Love takes you on your way? Mm, nope. I got my ammo, my gun, my backup yeah. ammo. <laughs> yeah, we're good. All right, okay. Sort of... Maybe an hour or two before midnight. Um, and Love comes to collect all of you and she leads you through the mine. Uh, you haven't been this way before. You know that there are sections of the mine which she has purposely said, don't go here because it's dangerous and it will lead you to the earth dark itself. Um, but she seems to know where she's going, stumbling along, uh, sorry, uh, moving along in the dark without too much problem. Um, Gref, you'll probably find it a bit difficult because there's no light and she doesn't seem intent on lighting a light source. Um just leads the way. Uh, you probably need to reach out for someone or light a torch. Um, it's entirely up to you. Graf does. <clears throat> okay. Uh, torch in hand. You guys, probably about an hour or two walk, uh, probably an hour and a half all told, um, before you walk out uh, under a dark, scar- uh, starry sky. Um, you can see that to the right-hand side of you as you guys walk out of this, uh, the north entrance to the mine, which is pretty well concealed. You have to like battle your way through some uh, some kind of like uh, growth that is in the way. It's kind of like leafy stuff. Um, and you see that there are three big horses to your right-hand side as you come out. Uh, there is a chestnut, there is a dark brown, and there is a black horse. Take whichever one you want. Um, and she says, well, uh, I guess I will see you guys when you return. Uh, if I'm not here, just uh, just leave the relic in my vault. Um, it's currently open when you close it. It should be fairly safe after that point. Um, well, uh, good luck. And I shall see you hopefully fairly soon. Be safe, Adna. Well, I always, I'm always safe. Well, travel with the best speed, all of you. Um, And she pulls up her kind of dark red scarf and she disappears in front of your eyes. Uh, She uses its ability to go invisible. What do you guys want to do now? Ron's taking the black horse. (laughs) I'll take the chestnut one. I don't remember what the other one was. That's why I chose the chest one, not one. Ah, you son of a bitch. Dark brown. It's dark brown. Okay. You guys suck. Iris is too <laughs> out of it. Take care. Yeah, he's uh he he has a lot going on. That's that's not lie. Um I'm gonna ask this. What are you guys naming these fucking horses? This is your one and only time for you guys to name your horses, otherwise uh, I will give them dumb names. What if I told you that Iran doesn't give a single fuck? Well, then I'm, uh, I'm not asking Iran. <laughs> I'm asking you. Well, does it have a pre-established name, or is this a our characters are naming it? No, it has a pre-established name, and you guys are naming them because I can't be able to come up with three unique names for these horses. Draw from the Patreon. Yeah, I could. <laughs> got a giant fucking list. Uh, okay, Griff is called Taz the Timid. God. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, we're done. You're going to be Taz the Indomitable. Uh, the dark brown is called <laughs> Neapolitan. What are these names? It's the closest thing to ice cream, my man. <laughs> You're welcome. We have Patreon names. We got to use them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just didn't want to use them on horses. Um. <laughs> Why not? We get so many. Uh, we don't have that many left. Uh, and I want to give your horse a really badass name. Dustin. That's that's fine. Ron's not going to give a shit. He has no. Yeah, re- he has like very little respect for these animals. Your animal handling would be poor. 
Uh, his animal handling is a plus two, which is funny because that means oh, he, yeah, has, uh, he has a higher <laughs> animal handling than balance. Of course, of course. Uh, all right, his name is going to be Case Lance. How the fuck is that? <laughs> Uh, C A S E dash L A N C E. Oh, exactly like it sounds. Okay. Yep. Yep. Cool. So I have a horse, black horse named Case Lance. Yep. All right. Okay. Take care of these horses, guys, because they may become born in some random side episodes one day. <laughs> I have wigs. <laughs> this is demeaning to Iran. <sighs> All right. They're just slightly faster than he can fly. Yeah, and also they don't tax you so much. That's true. I'm adding that to my list of inventions. I need, I need, uh, like rocket, rocket wings, <laughs> jet wings. I think having wings is, uh, yep, close enough. Uh, okay. You guys have your horses sorted. All right. All right. You guys make your way. Through the desert. One of you, I assume, Gref, in his uh, logistic packing, uh, packed some sort of rudimentary map um, and some sort of directional aid because I don't think any of you know naturally where north is. Surely there are stars and sunrise and sunset systems we can use. But sure, I also have a compass adding that to my... I'll episode. tell you about this. I know where the sun sets. I know where the sun rises. I could not tell you where north was, like in the middle of the day nor at night. <laughs> it's not a skill well, that people use unless they actively use it all the time. Well, I, I can tell you right now where it is for me. Yeah. But you go walking through a forest for days on end. It's uh, North for me is that way. Yeah. But if you go walking through wood with paths that wind and twist, it suddenly becomes very difficult. Um, it's not really easy. All right, all right. See, I, I got an answer. Aron pulls out a, bo- a bowl, fills it with water, gets a piece of cork, takes a needle, rubs it with the magnet, puts it on the cork. Oh, he has magnets, does he? <laughs> I would assume that's part of his scraps. You would assume so. I do not. Um, no, it's it's a. I assume you have some sort of directional aid. Um, so yeah, you have your maps, you have your directional aid, however you guys decide in your minds that this is the way it's going to be carried out. Yeah. Uh, and you guys make your way across the desert. So you make your way across the farmlands. The farmlands slowly turn into woods. The woods slowly turn into kind of more like palmy type trees. Um, and then eventually you come across a vast wasteland of nothing but sand and dust. You see dunes ahead of you. You see that there are rolling sand dunes you can see that there are some very solid sandstone um and ahead of you probably half a day's ride um you can see that there is a structure it's about 600 feet uh tall um many hundreds of feet wide you can see this large sandstone ish type pillar it's not exactly sandstone but it looks from this distance um you can see it reaches high into the sky you can see it's many hundreds of feet wide and you can see even from here that there um towards the top there is a large hole that you can just see through and you know this place to be the place you're looking for symphona um you know that symphona is contained within this large protrusion of sandstone type material carved within it it takes about half a day more to travel there. Um, you guys have been going solid for about good time on your horses, six and a half, almost seven days. Um, so by the time you get there, it's probably becoming dusk. It's probably becoming night. So end of day six for sure. All right. You arrive. Um, this place... Uh... No, I don't think any of you would know this. I don't think of any reason why you guys would have gone here. Um as you arrive, you hear the hustle and bustle of the nightlife. Um, there are still market traders on the lower levels uh, carved into this huge protrusion of rock. Um, you can see that there are many holes dug in the side of this and you can see they extend into well-lit little shops and buildings and cafes and food and such like. It's a real metropolis. It could be a well, very much well be a city inside here. Um, you hear people calling out their wares, yelling that they're still selling, uh, you know, various pieces of clothing and armor and stuff. You hear mostly at this time of night, you hear the calls of the ale houses and the bars and the dance areas. You hear the calls of the brothels, most most especially. Um, 
You can look up, you can see that the digging into the side of this rock has, uh, it's lesser and lesser uh, the higher up you go. Um, this is basically what you see when you arrive. Uh, there's a very big, large entrance, uh, which you could definitely walk your three horses into, still riding. I guess we ride in and find a stable first to put the horses. Yeah, that's fairly easy. Uh, you you see a young... Ah, yeah, screw it, because they're cute. You see a young little turtle with a, with a dark red shell. Uh, they come like waddling out and they, they take your, your horses and they say, so there'll be seven, wait, there's three of you. So nine silver. Okay. Iris, pay the, pay the boy. Iris doesn't even argue. He just hands him a gold. <laughs> uh, you see the little, little turtle like put it inside their shell uh, and they, they take the horses and they, they, uh, they board them. Um, inside you can see that there is uh, that the place that you've walked into leads to a very big staircase that seems to wind its way upwards um, taking it you would assume almost to the very top of the structure um, excuse me uh, boy what was what was your name hmm what was his name hmm what was his name Shelby <laughs> Jesus get out no come on V <laughs> V no. is good no, don't do it. Don't v. don't cave to his shit. I am not caving to his shit. Do it. <laughs> no. From now on, everybody has punny names. No. Next to Baxi is going to be called Katniss. No. <laughs> <laughs> the next one will rhyme with Aether is dead. No. Uh, <laughs> Aether shed? Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> people call me Uthbat. U-T-H-B-E-R-T. But you can always call me Bert. Right, Bert. Um, any idea where we could find a, a Temple of Ogma here in town? We were told there might be some people here. Ogma? Right. Um, it's apparently yes. like a know-it-all god or something. Most of the gods are up at the bargain and they point upwards. But those places are probably closed now, right? Kid. Uh, Griff, why are you staring down the kid? Stop it. It's very weird, sir. Please stop. I'm, um, I'm not staring him down. I'm just asking a question. I, th I think some of the temple people are still working, possibly. Have you ever been to the bargain before? This is our first time here. Uh, I would recommend taking something to trade. Something like what? Um, you could take whatever is of value. Depends what you're looking to find out. Or if you're just going to pray, then you can probably just go up there as you are. They would probably okay. like want well. empty scrolls or something like that, right? They're nerds. They want books. Graf, How, we, Graf we need to work on your... Um, People Social. skills. <laughs> yes. Don't you start with me, I'm, Timmy. It's but, sir. Uh, Sorry, but. But. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> All right, we're going to be leaving now. Thank you very much, Bert. Let's go. Must, Graf. Excuse me, sir. Wait, yeah. wait what's, what's your name? Because I have to board them under a name. Oh, yeah, we gave him our horses. Maybe they want to piss off the kid. Uh, put that under Ivers. Ivaris. Okay. Yeah, he's the one that paid for it, so fuck it. With a jaunty whistle, uh, the kid Earthbert um, grabs the horse's reins and, and boards them at the side. It'll be fairly easy to come back and find them. They're not going to... Well, they we might need, run off with the horses, but you have to come back and find that out. We need to never speak to that turtle again. <laughs> Why? The turtle because I had to like hardcore restrain myself from slipping into that same fucking accent. <laughs> I know. I actually do on a codification. It's like... <laughs> You guys make your way up this staircase. Um, as you're making your way up there, can y'all make a perception check for me, please? I'll do it at disadvantage since I don't have night vision like everybody else. It doesn't matter. In this place, it's fairly well lit. 13. Rolling low today. 15. Rolling high today. I got a 12. I got a rock. <laughs> and a rock launcher rock lobster uh, you cannot convert this into a weapon 
I I'm saying this now, okay? Um as you are looking around and making your way up, um Griff, you become aware that there are a couple of tieflings and a tabaxi that seem to be very closely watching you all. And as you're making your way up, they just seem to they just seem to like come across your field of view. They just seem to be following you. It just you're seeing them too often for it to be a coincidence. Uh Griff like kind of like rubs the back of his neck and puts his hand in his <laughs> ear and goes like we got company. Just keep walking. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> what do they look like? Like you and furry people. Tabaxi. What colors and do they have wings? I can't see that well. And no, I Tabaxi don't have wings. Not that. <laughs> oh my God. Another infamous Beautiful. line from the Book of Gref. <laughs> it's a fucking genius. <laughs> Not the tabaxi, you idiot. None of the tiefling had wings, um, right? No, they didn't. Uh, they they had like uh, one of them had like really a really pointed ridge um, in their eyebrows, but that's about it, really. Um, oh. Looks a bit more pissed off and annoyed than you would expect. Um, one of them is a dark blue color. Uh, the other one is a pale blue. Um, and the tabaxi is a black and white striped cat. Uh, zebra cat. Zebra! Yeah. There's, it's so cute. There's four of them. One of them's got a permanent skull. The other are shades of blue. And then we got a black and white cat. <laughs> God damn it. Black and white tabaxi. Three. That's, that's three. <laughs> oh, I thought the skull guy was a different guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. No, no. Whatever. Listeners get it. Listeners are smarter than me. Smarter than the Graf, at least. <laughs> Let's be right. honest here. Graf is an extension of me. Yes. <laughs> Can confirm. Just keep walking. <laughs> keep an eye on them. Call out any movements. Graf's going to stay a little bit more vigilant. And if any of them come within sword hitting distance, that means like punch in face time. For Gref. Okay. Um, you guys make your way to the bargain. As you're going up and trying to figure out exactly what this means, it all signs seem to indicate the, uh, as you were standing outside, you could see there was like a really big hole that went all the way through. It seemed to be this level up here. It's quite high up. Uh, you're probably talking like four, 450 feet high, something like that. As you make your way up there and you come out onto this kind of like open area, um, you can feel the wind, the coldness of the night. It's it's real cold up here. It's real blustery up here. Um, but as you look around, you can see that there are there are small little buildings that have been either carved into the very few sides that are up here, um, limited space, or they have been constructed out, up here out of something sturdy or magical. Um there seems to be the only real oasis is up here. You can spot a place for Tyr. You can spot a place for uh, Okma. And... Hmm. Oh, uh, Torm and Ilmater. Um, yeah, they're the only ones you see up here. The, the Triad and Ad Ogma. Yeah. Oh, no, there is one more that you also see. Sorry, like my notes are a little bit squished because I'm not had a chance to read them too much before we did this. Um, you also see Sylvanus. That's God so, of Nature? Yeah, God of World Nature, yeah. Hmm. Griff kind of just like tilts his head at the Ogmas temple like, all right, um, well, we didn't bring anything to trade, did we? And why was it wrong for me to tell me to, to tell, say that we should bring books and scrolls? That No, that wasn't your choice of words. You guys make everything way more difficult than it needs to be. Um, as you're standing at the top here, looking around and having this uh, conversation, shall we say? Uh, I won't say dressing down. You're having this conversation. Um, Griff, you spot those three people um, at the top of the stairs. They cast a glance over at you, the three of them, and they try and nonchalantly make their way um, over to the uh, Sylvanas' temple. 
there isn't a lot of people up here. I will throw it out to you. It's not a lot of people. Are they like out of earshot distance if I lower my voice enough? You can try. All right. <clears throat> uh, Graf just kind of lowers his voice and like, we're going towards the Sylvanas temple, the three from earlier. Do we want to follow them? No, we shouldn't start anything here. They could be assembly. It would be very important for us to stop them be- from finding out more. Well, they're in the wrong temple. All we've got to try to do is be in the right one. Let's go. Fine. And Gref starts working towards the Akmas temple. Unhappy that his plan to get into a fight foiled once again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we'll turn it into an ambush. If they try to follow us into Agma's temple and they try to start something, then we can get them. They didn't pick the wrong temple. They know what artifact they're going for. They know something we don't know. They're probably trying to follow us. They probably don't know, but they would assume that we do. That's like a level beyond my logical planning phase. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, um, D- don't just trust me, we're fine right now. Nah. They're doing we're we're doing a counter follow tactic and they're trying to play along so that they don't get caught. They followed us, we stopped moving. If they tried to keep following us when we stopped moving, that would make them look suspicious. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Okay, okay, let's just go to the temple, figure this out. Right. You guys should make your way over to Ogma. It's on the other side of uh, the staircase. Look, it's uh, buried into the far wall. This is one that's been established here for a while. Uh, Next to it is uh, a shrine, a place dedicated to Torm. As you make your way over to Ogma's, um, you realise that there is very little going on. Um, You can perhaps see a very old-looking tabaxi with dark blue skin um, just sitting inside... uh, kneeling down, praying to the, the statue of their god. Um, again, there's nobody in this temple. Um, there's a couple of people over in Torms, uh, but that's about it. As you make your way over, you notice that the the other dark blue feral-looking tabaxi, uh, sorry, uh, tiefling that was with the group that were following you, is now slowly making their way over towards uh, where you are. They look like they're going to Torms, but you suspect they're probably following you. The other two are kind of in Sylvanas' temple and appear to be praying. Hmm. I'm assuming the other two noticed this now that we, this has been talked about. Yes, yeah. Um, Iris is going to walk up to the uh, the person that's praying, that's not faking it, hopefully. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Foiled again. <laughs> um <laughs> As you as you approach, uh, you realize that this uh, dark blue skin old tiefling, um, you see that her horns, uh, they just basically go straight up. Uh, they're sort of like worn down with age sort of thing. Um, and uh, she looks up at you and she says, yes. Can I incite this person? You may. Uh, what are you inciting? Simply... Uh, simply inciting to see if anything seems out of place, if this person seems a little bit too rough to necessarily be one of Agma's followers. Um, I want to see if this feels right, if she seems like she is a if follower, she if she's if she's faking it or if she actually is like sitting here, like if she is actually okay. a cleric here. Yep, go for it. That's a natural one. <laughs> Oh god. It's super difficult to tell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the holiest holy people you've ever seen. Uh, she looks like assembly. Oh man. Shit. Uh, you guys can do insight checks too if you want. I mean I think uh, so far all you've got is it's difficult to tell. <laughs> my only question is is it a feral or winged? Uh she's neither. Good. Uh I want to say uh, we entered a temple, right? Yes, uh, kind of like it's uh, it's dug into the side of uh, basically imagine like a circle has been punched through the top of this pillar of like sandstone type material. Mm-hmm. It's been dug into one of those like sides. Um, yeah, is it kind of like open? 
Kind of, yeah. Yeah, you can okay, like, okay, okay. because it's not a deep one. No. It's not a particularly big okay, temple. Okay. It's just old. Okay, okay. Then Graf is standing, since there was no ambush spot for him to take, uh, then Graf <laughs> is standing with uh, Iris. And I'm going to do an inside check too. Okay. Uh, I got an eight. <laughs> Super difficult to tell. Uh, she's old. Yeah, yeah. She's old. Jeez. Do you want to jump on the inside train as well, Aron? Nope. All right, cool. Aron is know. keeping an eye out for these people that uh, are following. Okay. Because I, I assume uh, uh, Griff described the one tiefling that had the, the ridges, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the one that's kind of like the, the dark one that's making its way over towards Torm, potentially. Uh, the other two... Actually, take a perception check on the other two. Ten. They seem to have disappeared from your view. You th- swore, like a moment ago, you saw them in Sylvanas' temple, but you can't see them anywhere now. That's fine. Uh, Aran is mainly keeping his eye on the tiefling with the ridges and has a hand on his gun. Okay, that's fine. Um, the old lady looks up at uh, Ivaris and... Can I help you? Do you happen to have a place a bit more quiet? To talk in here. We'd like to have a word. Well, uh, uh, we just have further inside the temple. I have a, a small discreet office at the back, but it's not really big enough for all of you. That's okay. Me and Graf here are going to stay outside. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, God. See, Graf, this was kind of what I was talking about. Like, you have to choose your wording and the way, like, you you two can go talk. I'm going to teach Graf here how to speak properly without making everything sound fucking weird. <laughs> it's okay. It's not always the word you choose. It's sometimes the intent behind them. I don't mind a bit of rough and tumble now and then. And she gives Graf like a big wink. Takes Iris by the arm, pulls herself up. All right, young man, uh, uh, through the back here. <laughs> he nods and follows. Uh, she takes him to the back area. We'll deal with Ivaris and then we'll go back to you two outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, she leads you to another place that has been carved into the rock itself. Um, it really is just a small, simple affair. Um, there's like two candles on the wall. Um, there are a couple of chairs in here, and that's about it, really. Um, you can see that there is a, a makeshift bed, um, like laying on the floor over to one side, but that's really about it. I just had a uh, question about an artifact, a relic of sorts, a blank scroll uh, of Alkma. Mm. Right, a powerful thing that people might be looking for. Yes. We'd like to know where it is, uh, any information you might have. Uh, Can I ask what you're seeking it for? You're not the first one to ask. Well, I'm afraid if anyone has asked before me, they were trying to take it from us. Uh, They could probably argue that you were trying to take it from them also. Certainly but we're trying to stop them from getting it. Ivaris flashes his uh, badge. Uh, she takes a badge and does that old person like staring at it thing, trying to determine if it's real then. <laughs> sure. She doesn't know what a real thing looks like. Uh, Gets back to you. <laughs> she says, mm, one of those task force not. Mm. You see her mutter something very quietly. She puts her hand on her symbol, and I need you to take a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. Well, fuck. Rip. Natural 20. Boom. (laughs) Eat my one good roll for today, V. (laughs) I am such an asshole because I kind of (laughs) did. No. It's the charisma, but I will take your natural 20 because I feel like a bad person. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Christmas one of my I good ones. I could probably on this. It. It's a twenty-five. <laughs> it's fine. Technically, even more. Okay. Uh, either way, I feel bad for having stolen that twenty. I'm really sorry. Um, 
you feel as if you feel the touch of a God that you're not used to um, and it flows around you in a zone. You feel like any way you move in this, you may be compelled to tell the truth, but for whatever reason, your inner will, your ability and practiced ability to manipulate others, you know that a zone of truth has just been cast on you and it has failed upon you. Now, do I know whether they are aware that their spell has she failed? She would be aware, yeah. She would be aware, yeah, for she sure. She would be aware it's failed. Okay. Mm-hmm. You could warn me, you know. I, I am the keeper of its location. I have to be sure to whom I share this information. Well, it sounds like you've let the information go once before. So go ahead and run your test again, and we'll see if I can pass. You make great assumptions of an old lady. I have told no one this truth. That's a relief of news on my part. Indeed. Go ahead and cast again. She looks you square in the eyes, and she says, without casting, are you with the Assembly of Thinkers? No. I showed you my badge. That means nothing. The Assembly hide everywhere. Well, you're right about that. But no, I'm not. Take a persuasion roll with advantage. Sure, that's going to be incredible. <laughs> 21. She nods and says... What are your intentions with the scroll other than to keep it away from the assembly? Do you plan on using it? Well, I don't even know what it's for. I don't know anything about it. My intent is to put it in the hands of the people that I think are, well, if you want honesty, I'm being paid to get it for them. You work for the Kino Initiative. That does not surprise me. I will give you this information on on a single condition. When you get to the relic, you do not give it to those above you. You keep it. You protect it. My life is short, probably hours, perhaps days more likely. The assembly will come for me and they will get that information. But that scroll, that relic, it's very powerful and can do a lot of damage to Ogma. Do not trust anyone. Promise me you will keep the relic and not give it to your superiors. Do you think that the assembly is trying to use this relic to hurt Ogma? You think they killed Severus? I believe that. I know that you kill a god with the soul of a devout person and a relic of said god. Now, there are a few relics of gods all over the place. This one I know, this one I am guardian of. I don't know who I can trust. And in my last moments, however long that may be now, I'm choosing to trust you. The corner of Iris's mouth kind of like turns up into a soft smile and he nods. Fine. I need to ask questions as the DM. Sure. Are you intending or keeping this promise? Um, yes. Until I... Yes. At the moment, yes. Um, at the moment, he's not going to give it up until he's certain that who he's given it to is 
the quote unquote Trust right me. hands. Right. He's he's okay. taking taking note of the fact that his god just died and this is apparently actually a thing that can uh kill this god is this thing going away. He's not one hundred percent being like totally honest, <laughs> but yes, at the moment, his intentions are to be very careful with it and keep it for himself until he knows what better to do with it. Okay. Uh, she will accept that as an answer. Uh, she won't do a, I won't make you do a deception rule. <laughs> um, okay. She looks over to your companions um, and we will jump over to those. Companions. Hi. You see this scowly looking motherfucker um, at the last moment turn away from Torm's temple and head over towards your temple, Orgma's temple. They're very slow, very deliberate in their movements. Um, you two are both trained fighters. You see evidence that they are cont- they are in fact carrying a variety of daggers. Um, you can't really tell much more than that. Um, they seem to be quick and agile on their feet. I need you both to take a perception check. Um, this is going to be a disadvantage okay. cool. because, yeah. I got a 10. I got 11. All right. You don't spot them, I'm afraid. <laughs> As they make their way over, the scowly looking motherfucker, dark skinned tiefling, um, stands in front of you, looks into the temple, sees that the old aged cleric is in the back talking to someone they can't see and they nod at you and try and make their way into the temple are you going to stop them or are you going to let them pass Graf steps Uh, if I'm in the like if I have the ability to um, Graf wants to step between the guy at the back office area oh absolutely yeah like you guys are I assume just outside this temple so yeah you can just like bar his path you are you're small for a Goliath, but you're still a burly bloke. Um. <laughs> yeah, Graf's gonna block his path and like, uh, kind of like look at him and then look over him. Like, there's there are many other places to worship. Go bother somebody else. And then he gets a little grin. They size you up and down, and they say, "But I wish to worship here." I seek knowledge. Do you bar the gates of knowledge? No. I'll give you a piece of free knowledge, though. If you don't get the fuck out of my face, I'm going to kick your ass right now. Intimidation. I need you to roll an intimidation check, yeah. I love it. (laughs) God damn it! I got a six. (laughs) I'm assuming Graf has like a piece of broccoli in his teeth and he looks just dumb. Well, I was just going to go for the latter comment, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he squares up to you. He's like chest out, head up. Like he's tall for a tiefling and you're kind of short for a Goliath. Um, and uh, kind of like squares up to you and looks you nice as <laughs> little man. I can enter here if I wish. Excuse me before things get bloody. The temple is closed for a little bit. Come back later. Turn and look at you. And they turn and look at the office. And at this point, the old cleric is beginning to cast a spell. You can see there are blue veins of magic coming out from her hands, from her holy symbol, as she's trying to access the knowledge to tell you where this thing is. And the scowly motherfucker looks at you, Aron, looks at Gref, and goes, <laughs> I think I would like my knowledge now. And the both of you feel a small stab in your back. Right. As the two who are invisible, and thus you didn't see, come out from their hidey places and stab you in the back. So I'm going to do their surprise round, and that's all they're getting. Yeah. Um, and then we'll kick on battle for proper. All right, okay. I need everyone to roll initiative, please. Okay, uh, so, Abron, what did you get? 16. Uh, what is your dexterity, please, sir? Plus four. Oh, then you are going ahead of this uh, this guy. I am dexterous AF. 
You are indeed. Uh, Ivorus. I rolled a 12. Okay. <laughs> and the last one. 13. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, alright, so uh, the tabaxi one is going to be stabbing up a Ron. No, don't. Yeah, for a natural 20. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Okay, <laughs> I might die. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> I assume this is an assassin. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, good. Alright, well, I, I need might to be dead, guys. Because do, I didn't expect him to crit. Don't, don't, don't worry, I will avenge you. I'll beat them to death with your wings. <laughs> Th- why don't you just beat him to death with his well. gun? He'll be more offended. <laughs> I think you would be so offended if I grabbed the gun by the barrel and started like pistol whipping so, everybody. All right. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, assassination rogues, when they get sneak attacks, so they get it with the crit, it doubles all of the dice, yeah. including sneak attack. Yeah. I think uh, technically it was supposed there. to have advantage on that attack. <laughs> That too. <laughs> but it natural 20, so I don't think I can do it again. <laughs> I'm going to die. Uh, and any hit in this would count as a critical anyway, so I got excited yep. and it doesn't matter. It would have been a critical anyway. Fuck's sake. Nope. Um, yep. Yep. Sneak all attack. right. Yep. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my dude. I'm so sorry. Bye, guys. I need to check. Uh, it's, it's, it's been fun. I think it's been nice knowing you, my dude. I'm going to come back as Aron's secret brother, Baron. Ah, uh, evil twin brother. Uh, should be should be his kid and you come to avenge your father. <laughs> Long distant <laughs> relative, Baron. Uh, oh, you could, play, you could play as his, uh, could play as your sister. Ooh. Okay, so 3d6 and a d4. Double that. Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, that's not that's not too bad. Twenty-four damage. It's not bad. <sighs> You're unconscious, aren't you? Three HP. <gasps> oh boy. Um I have three HP. Okay, and the oh boy, dude, like you just feel like your kidney go. <laughs> like uh. this is this is not good, my friends. Um, and now it's the go of the light blue teepling that was invisible. It's now stabbing Gref. Yes. Not a lot of critical. No, that was a one. Oh. Um, I'm going to guess that one doesn't hit. Uh, it does have advantage. Oh, yeah, it does. Thank you. Ah, Gotta be that's fair. better. That's better. Uh, 21 versus your armor class. Yeah, it's 17. He hits. Okay. Stop it. What I... What's for me to do, motherfucker? Motherfucker! Not kill us. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was not good. 19 damage. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It's a bit of me that's super happy. <laughs> Ref's a little hardier. I am. Uh... Yeah, it's a little bit of me that's super happy. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so now it's uh, Scowly Blue's uh, go. Um, and he will pull out one of his daggers and he will attempt to go for Gref. Stab for 24 versus your armor class. God fucking damn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit, you hit. No, don't do it. Uh, technically, it had an advantage. I'm going to roll to it just in case. No, nope, it didn't. Okay. What is that motherfucker? Uh, just have advantage. Because he's assassinate, uh, you have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in the combat yet. <laughs> any hits counted as a crit. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Hey, Everest, we're dying. I know. Fifteen damage. All right. Oh shit. Yeah, they are not looking good. Welcome to the single digits, Gruff. Yeah, it's fun here. Alright, uh, it's now a Ron's go. What the fuck am I gonna do? I don't know, alright? I did not expect them to pull this I off. I have 3 HP. I did not expect them to pull this off, I'm not gonna lie. Um. How high is the ceiling? 
Uh, how high do you want it to be? I really want to help you out. I don't want you guys to die yet. <laughs> but if it's ridiculous, I'm not helping. <laughs> I don't know. I want to get away from this shit. That hurt. Uh, let's say it's... Uh, well, average height is like 10, so say like 15 feet. Fuck. That's not enough. Here it is. You can fly. It's not going to help. Here it is. No, it's still going to throw shit at me. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But it's a lot better than being like stabbed right me well. <laughs> and you're being no. flanked by the third person. I don't know if I so you should do. probably avoid that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Either way you turn, there's someone behind you. Ugh. Call my dude. Just kill him in one shot. Yeah, I'll get right on that. One shot, one kill. <laughs> what bunch? Got it. Gotcha. That absolutely would not help. Fuck it. Iran's going to disengage. Okay. Fly straight up. Yep. Expeditious retreat on himself. Of course. And fly away. Where? Away. I need a bit more of that. Are you flying into the temple? Are you flying over the edge of the bargain? Are you making your way towards any of the other temples? I need a bit more of it than a way. <laughs> Torm is the god of fighting and war and shit. Isn't he? he is indeed, yes. I'm gonna fly to that one. He's the god of- there wants to get into the scraps. Yeah, he's, he's the god of kicking the shit out of stuff, yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I'm gonna go fly over there and be like, hey, anybody want to beat the shit out of some assassins? Okay. All right, so you're beginning to make your way over to them. That's fine, that's perfect. You are up in the air, you are out of reach of standard melee weapons. So figure 15 up, 15 out, and then another 30 from the dash. So that's... Technically, you know, like 45 feet feet re- retreat thingy, but yes. Um, yeah, so you're like 45 feet away. We'll go with that, that's fine. I'm good with that. Okay, uh, that you'll, you'll go down. That, that is literally every action I have. Fantastic. Uh, okay, it's now uh, Light Blue's go. Um, it's going to attempt to stab at Graf again because Graf is the only dude here. Um, Sorry, Graf. You are not forgiven. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aram's not sorry. Well, Arch is not forgiven. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way. All right, so technically it, it will have... Uh, it will have a thing. A thing? Uh, it, it has sneak attack because uh, it has like two of its comp- basically a companion mm. in melee. Yeah. Yeah. It's no advantage, but that's no, no, no. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, for a thirteen versus your armor class. Fucking finally, my armor did something. Your armor did something Woo. useful. Okay. Um. No, he doesn't have a second weapon. Okay. Uh. It doesn't want to get out of melee range because its mates are going to beat the shit out of you. So what do you want to do, Gref? Uh, Gref basically like is oozing blood from what two <laughs> really deep puncture wounds. Gonna uh, no, just one. Just no, one. I got stabbed twice. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh no, yeah, you did. My bad. Got stabbed yeah. from the back and then from the front. <laughs> I'm zooming it was like I got stabbed in the back. I look back and then it's just a knife across my throat. Yep, yep. It's uh, unpleasant. What do you want to do? So I'm gonna first. I'm gonna second wind, uh, which is okay. It's a bonus action to regain eight hit points. So okay, go uh, for well, it. Well, I'm gonna you have eight hit points returned. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bonus uh, action to re- basically you're like and your blood's like so angry it clots. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Gref, bonus action, second wins, and then he's gonna take Orkin carved and his other long long sword out, and he's gonna first stab uh, the guy that. Uh, didn't didn't want to back down. I'm going to stab him with Orkin Carp. Oh, yeah, like scowly motherfucker. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. go for it. The dummy that didn't step down. I got yep. a 26 to hit. Boy. Yep. And that's, that's a 14. Uh, you, you slash him hard down the front. Yep. And as Gref kind of feels like the, the blood taste in his mouth, he just kind of goes into a little bit of a frenzy. So I'm using my action search. Uh, so I can take an additional okay. action on my round. And I'm hitting him and again. And possible bonus action. Oh, well, then I'm attacking with Orkin Carved and my longsword. Okay. And I'll use second wind for the bonus action. I'm uh, action surge gives you an additional action and possible bonus action. Oh. So yeah. I hit him again. Oh, always forget that. 
So I hit him with Parking Cart for 20 to hit. Oh, that that's... Uh, you are slashing him a good one. He doesn't look so well. Is that, uh, he takes another 9 damage. Uh-huh. And uh, you, you do like the cross on him. Mm. Like He's like got a, got an X on him now. And then I'm going to try to stab him with the Log Sword as my last action. As a, as a bonus okay. action from two, two wielding. Yeah, from your action surge, yeah. 25 to hit. Uh, you basically like like carve a cross like an X on him and then you just stab at the center point and you twist the blade and pull it out and the guy falls to the ground dead um good job dude I guess yeah Kref spits blood on his corpse and turns around <laughs> anybody else wanna learn things <laughs> uh take a <laughs> Take an today. intimidation, you've got him, man. Like the last one was so good, they didn't listen to you, and you literally just cut this guy in pieces. Go can, on. It, can it be a strength intimidation? Take yes, it should be a strength today. intimidation. Yes. All right, then we will add plus two to whatever I roll. Okay. Uh, I rolled a fourteen. Too bad. Okay. Uh, so Scowly, no Scowly, motherfucker said um, the. Light blue tabaxi that stabbed you. Um, he's making a run for the stairs. Um, but the other one, the tabaxi, is just like, he's not having any of this shit. Like, he's gonna stay here. Um, you got light blue to run. Uh, technically, you can have opportunity attack, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I if do. you want to. I really do, but I feel like it's ridiculous to get it's action surge and that's the point of a reaction like once you burnt it you burnt it like, you're only gonna get more attacks later so don't feel bad about yeah, it yeah you're gonna get like a fuck ton of attacks later <laughs> oh yeah you're right I'm about to be stabbed to death so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 26 to hit um, as as they turn to run uh, you give them a hearty slash down the back and you see them like uh, like uh, wince in pain and they, they they don't stop their stride they are kind of terrified of the Goliath thing that has just like ripped a hole in the other guy um Okay, I, I guess that's that's your go. Um, yes. You literally cannot do anything else anymore. Um, that's it. No no reactions. So if they run away from you now, you can't do nothing. <laughs> uh, Ivoris, it's now your go. You have seen oh what has happened to your companions. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> How far away are they? Uh, I'm going to say like... Uh, Three or four, uh, three or four rods. So like twenty-ish feet, twenty-five okay. feet. I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> um, well, which is the one that was talking with him? That's closer to the exit. Uh, the one, the one, one that was talking to him is dead. <laughs> okay. Well, I need one of the other ones to go ahead and make a saving throw. What kind? Uh, the, the only one that you could probably reach, uh, or is it anywhere to anyone you can see? Oh shit! I need to walk up there. I'll walk up there. Yeah, you can. In that case, you can only reach the tabaxi. Okay, I'll do that then. Black and white zebra stride tabaxi. And this is my channel divinity oh my one. Oh, channel divinity! I get to roll the thing. Whatever that means for you. Yep. Okay, I'll do I'll do the saves first. So, uh, wisdom saving throw will be charmed uh, by you for a minute. Crossing my fingers. I'm crossing my fingers because I want them to win. I don't want... Uh, that's 11. <laughs> that is not going to work. All right, okay. Excellent. I may have to re-roll it. I think that's a... I have to re-roll one. Nope, no, it doesn't. <laughs> nope, no, it doesn't. Okay, I'll tell you the effects after we deal with what's happening here. Oh, um, Lord. Okay. This person is charmed by you now. Um, so they, they turn over and they see this like almost tabaxi looking creature uh, walking out from like this kind of blue ethereal glow behind them. And you just see their eyes go wide. Um, and for the briefest moment, you see them have the exact same eyes that you have, but then it just glasses over. Um, the other one's just gonna keep running, guys. Is anyone gonna stop him or? Aran's just gonna fucking shoot the fucker. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, 19 to hit for 17 damage, uh, six of which is thunder. Oh boy! Um, do you know what? As close as damage to swearing by like two points, uh, between the two of you, you've managed to take this one down. It basically goes face first as you see, as you guys hear this 
thunderous erupting of sound coming from somewhere up above and to the side. As you see this bullet just take it square in the back and it just falls face first and just skids along the ground for a little bit. Um, as, as close as Damis is wearing you, you basically took it out. Um, okay, um, as this explosion of sound goes off and as uh, as light blue, as we're going to call them, is uh, charmed by Ivaris, it begins to rain little gold pieces. What? What? Just, just inside the temple and just like two or three feet outside the temple. Begins to rain gold pieces. <laughs> Amazing. What? <laughs> well, I'm just going to swoop down and open up this bag of holding and be like, I don't know what's going on, but fuck, this is good. Okay. Uh, oh my God, I just got stabbed. <laughs> Gold fixes money. everything. <laughs> right back where, I got, I'm right here back where I got stabbed. Because of <laughs> funding. Money. Funding. Um, okay, everyone, roll a D100. Oh, baby. 64. You collect 64 gold pieces. <laughs> Ooh, sort of. <laughs> Wait until you figure out that that's like my coin purse that's spilling out everywhere. <laughs> Be so That's fine. Mad. I, I I want you to write this down, but write it separately, please. <laughs> oh. oh my god! Fuck you, B. <laughs> Come on. I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> Come on. You collect sixty four gold pieces. Um, the creature, okay. um, light blue, because currently they don't have a name, uh, or at least you've not found out yet. Um, they are charmed. Uh, the time is quickly passing. However, yeah, as a bonus action, I do a. Command. Okay. Right? Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. When Ivis does this thing, um, we're on a big tower, right? Yes. How far away is that big open part of the tower? Uh, like you're in, like, imagine like a, a like a tall structure with like a hole that's been jammed through all the way through it. You're sort of on in that hole. Um, you're probably about 50 or 60 feet from the nearest edge. Wonderful, because it has a 60 foot range. Um, oh so no! As long as he doesn't <laughs> leave that sixty-foot range, Iris says, "Go on, fly off now." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So we're four hundred and fifty feet in the air. Yeah, this this thing will die. Um, when you issue a command, and at the end of each of its turns, the creature must succeed a Wisdom saving throw or have to carry out your instructions. What is your saving throw? It's fifteen, but he already failed this one—the very first one. Right. There's two saves. When you issue a command, there's another one it makes. So first time, the, the check is to see whether you charm it full stop, and you have. And then for every command that you issue, it has to, it takes another saving throw. He turns and runs the 60 feet to the edge and stops. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it can only do what it can at its movement speed. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make it make its wisdom save. Okay. It fails. Okay. There is exactly one uh, one tiefling left. It's the light blue one. Sorry. Tabaxi. The tabaxi is standing at the edge. My bad. Hmm. So the tabaxi is the only one of the original three that's still alive. And it's standing at the edge waiting to be thrown over to the abyss, I assume. <laughs> Your companions are basically safe. There's no one around them to harass them. Uh, this thing is standing and looking down, um, ready to do whatever you command it to. That's a shame. By the way, I'm going to say this, that like once he starts running away, Graf is standing in the middle of the golden rain and just he's holding his swords out and he is like, like he's just having some kind of weird like mental breakdown. There's just, he heard like a loud crack. He's losing a lot of blood and there's gold <laughs> raining. He's just like, yes, yes, I am amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad you said gold raid and not golden show. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> Iris puts on his business face and very sternly and pulls out his sword and walks over to the edge and on his way over there before he even gets over there, he's like, I've changed my mind actually. Uh, if you would kindly just step over and hang off the edge, it would be great. Thank you. And he turns around and waves his buddies over. Well, quote unquote buddies, his <laughs> companions. Um, you see the guy get down, sit down on the floor, uh, turn around a bit and grab the edge with his hands and just dangle off the edge. Wonderful. 
I assume that's what you wanted him to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just to like make interrogating him very easy. Yes, I figured as much. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Now what? It stopped raining gold, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'll worry about that in a minute. <laughs> Count my fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to do now? Uh, I'm going to land near the others and cast Cure Wounds on myself because I have some boo-boos. Okay. Uh, your natural natural magical healing abilities um, combined with your knowledge of magics. Uh, yeah, there is a small red flash um, as your wounds begin to heal over. Sorry, your singular wound heals over. Uh, you stop oozing my, blood my from your kidney. Wound. Yeah, like <laughs> your kidney slowly begins to reform. Um, yeah. That was... Less than pleasant. Gref is just playing to whatever imaginary crowd he is imagines throwing gold at him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the gold has stopped, my dude. <laughs> it's actually just a Ron taking gold coins out and just bink. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know Graf. you love it. Bink. Graf. You know you love it. Bink. Graf. Well, this is uh, the worst. Ivaris. Uh, Ivaris, what are you doing? The only sane person here right now. What are you doing? I'm going to walk over and point my rapier down at this guy that's hanging off the edge and release my control of him. Okay. Um, as you do that, like the guy's eyes go wide. You see his hands like grip tighter on the edge and he just looks up at you with, like a bit of like confusion. He's not entirely sure how he got here. Well, hello. Uh, hey. What am, what am I doing there? <laughs> well, you made an unfortunate decision, first of all. Shouldn't have attacked us. Who do you work for? I could take a guess. I think I already know. But I'd like to hear you tell me. Hey. I'm going to say, like, you win the intimidation roll on this. Um. I have a plus nine, plus he's hanging off the edge. He's hanging off the edge, yeah. I don't know what you want me to roll, but I'm pretty sure. You don't need it. Um, (laughs) He looks up at you and says, "Uh, I'll watch for the assembly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're trying to uh, beat us to something, aren't you? Hey, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we know. What do you know about it? What do you want from it? What are you doing? We, we need that. We need to stop it from falling into the wrong hands. The wrong hands. Interesting. You see their hands begin to slip. Please, just just help me up. Calm down, calm down. You, uh, you know anything about it? You see them swallow and look over in the direction of the, the temple. We know that the lady in there, she knows where it is and we'll just, we'll just come here to find out and we saw you and... I swear we just came here to find out where it is. Please let me up. Please help me, I'm slipping. All right. I'll help you up on one condition. Name it. Opt to fail this. And he casts Suggestion. Ooh. Um, okay. Uh, this thing will try to resist. I'm, I'm, yeah, this thing is going to try. Well, like, well, well. Hanging off the v, edge, it has like well, two options, v, but it's going to try. V, there was one condition. <laughs> uh-huh. It better hope it fails. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to get it to do, Neil? I don't want to know yet. Um, what's your DC? 15? Yeah. Wisdom? Yes. Yes! <laughs> Fuck. It passes! <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, okay, what kind of magic is that? That's my uh, racial. So I don't think that that would do anything. Your racial, yeah, that doesn't, that won't spark anything because it comes from your blood, not from uh, Severus. Okay, okay. Yeah. Iris rolls his eyes and sticks his blade down at the guy. <laughs> I asked nicely, come on. I said one condition. Are you stabbing him? <laughs> No, I'm just like, like poking po- in his face. I'm, I'm like poking him in the face, like doing that. Like I'm gonna push you off. You see, uh, you see him looking around. 
like uh, looking around, looking down, looking up at you, looking around, seeing that there's no real means of escape. And he says, what do you want from me? And he keeps looking down to the side and looking back up at you. I want to know if there's anything else that we need from you. But unfortunately, at the moment, there's no way for me to find out if there is or isn't something we're going to need from you. So I'd like you to keep your fucking mouth shut and do as I say. If you want to live. Looks down. Looks back up at you. Says. The assembly. They're going to kill me. If I say anything to you. Good luck. And they push hard off against the side of the thing. I want to do something. Go for it. I'm going to, uh, like, falcon dive off the edge. Okay, interesting you said that. Because you are some feet away. As this thing pushes off... I do have Expeditious Retreat. How long does it last? Uh, I believe a minute. I think you'd be right on the edge of that. Because this conversation... I'm use the last of it. Are, oh, wait, no, genuine. it's ten minutes. Oh, then, then you're fine. Um, nice, nice. Uh, as they push themselves back um, and they fall down and uh, they sort of like disappear into the fog of the darkness, you see something fly out and catch them and fly off into the distance. But, of course, Aron is right behind them. Ooh. Ooh, pursuit time. Mm. All right, let's go. You see them pull out a dagger. You see that the thing that has caught them is another tiefling. Uh, They seem to be struggling with the weight. Um, They're not flying as far as you'd want them to, as quickly, uh, sorry, as they want. Um, The one that has dropped uh, pulls out their remaining dagger and they throw it at your face. Please do something good. No. That's good. No. That's a 22. That's going to hit. That's going to hit. It doesn't have advantage. And it shouldn't have sneak attack then. A seven damage. I'm still alive. You're still alive. I do need you to make a constitution saving throw for concentration. Seven. You fail. You lose your expeditious retreat. That's fine. That's fine. he's still flying slow anyways. Yes. Uh, he's not as fast as you'd hope. Um, can either of you two do anything to help him? Like guide him along a bit further or... I don't know, chuck a sword at him. I don't really know. Like, is there anything you guys <laughs> to think you can do to help before I, I go off with the run? How far away are they now? Uh, let's say for the sake of everything, they're like 15 feet out. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah, they're not too far because obviously you had to catch them and then fly out a bit and then Aron had to go catch up. So, yeah. Um, Aron, is, Aron is probably about 10 feet from them. Uh, they're probably about 15 feet from you. Okay. I mean, I've got something I can do. Sure, go for it. Uh, since I'm 60 feet away from the edge anyway, Graf is just, he's just like, did you hear it? The thunder is applause. Oh my God. <laughs> they showered me a gold. I'm going to, I'm going to give you inspiration for like, just staying with that story thread. <laughs> I, I can't even, it's commitment right there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is Griff Christ. actually psychotic? I think he might be. Like, he really wanted a gladiator <laughs> moment and he just accidentally got it. <laughs> it's just... Illusions of grandeur right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a psychopath or a sociopath or one of the two. I think both. Uh, so, Ivor? All right. I'm going to cast command on the flying one. Okay. God, I'm just doing all of my things, all of my mind control right now. I assume that's a spell? It is. Is it a uh, Sabras Blessed spell? It is. Hashtag Blessed. Hashtag, Hashtag blessed. blessed. He needs to make a wisdom <laughs> saving throw. <laughs> okay. As the laundry prepares to make all my gold rain off the side of this. <laughs> that was a tower. It got a 19 without adding any butterflies, so. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, as you cast this spell, you suddenly feel a massive pull underneath you and so does in fact everyone in range but it doesn't really affect the flyers um Griff how far are you? 60 feet I think oh yeah you're fine um <laughs> I wish for the only one affected as gravity's reversed <laughs> <laughs> and you basically shoom, to the ceiling which is now your floor 
fuck? Uh, that I'm going to say is your go <laughs> because we're out of combat rounds. Okay, um, we're going to continue the order as we have written uh, just because it makes things a little easier. So uh, we're going to say that light blue, uh, sorry, Tabaxi and his friend go on the same go because fuck this. Okay, uh, I'm going to say you land like in a bit of a heap, but like not terribly. So you get straight back up on your feet again. Uh, okay, so we'll go to the back to the top of the round, which is Aron. Hi. Hi. What do you want to do? All right. So, um, so this guy's weighed down holding the tabaxi. Yeah. Um, so Aron's going to, because he's a master of aerial combat, fly at an angle upwards so that he's above the other tiefling. Yeah, possible. Yeah. Uh, blocking the vision of the tabaxi so that he can't pull any other shit on me. Mm-hmm. And uh, from above, Aron's going to fire straight into the back of the tiefling. Go for it. So I'm going to shoot him in the back first. Uh, 23 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. That's 11 piercing and 4 thunder. Um, again, a huge, like, roar of thunder um, explodes at the end of your gun with a slight flash. Um, and you take this thing in, like, one of its shoulder blades, and you just kind of like, ah! As, it, you know, as you, you blood falls, uh, presumably, onto the tabaxi below. Um, good shot. And then, uh, for the rest of my movement, mm-hmm. um, I want to drop down straight on top of the tiefling. You want to grapple him? Um, not really grapple. Like, I just want to drop down on top of him to add more weight so it strains him. Like, right between the wings. I want to ride this fucker. Uh, if you want to ride it, that's a grapple. Um... I'm going to make you make a grapple check because it's it's still able to do its little... Technically, its movement happens at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm going to make you take a grapple check. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Okay. Well, not bad. I rolled a 16. It rolled an 8. Okay. I am riding that bit. Uh, you, are, you are heavily, you know, weighing this thing down. Um, but you are right next to it. You're right on top of it. Okay. And then I'm going to take my gun and put it at the back of his head and say, Land. Now, take an intimidation check. I clicked. Oh, nope, nope, four. Oh boy, you'll find the results of that in a minute. Graph. Uh, I'm gonna say that the second <laughs> thunderous boom uh, kind of snaps him back to reality, and Graph's just gonna sprint towards uh, sprint towards Ivaris, uh, trying to like get back, like handle on what's happening. So uh, that's basically just my action plus. As yeah, as you as you run there, as you enter that thirty foot radius around him, you get thrown into the air, and the ceiling becomes your floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say you guys are about thirty feet up. All right. Uh, that that's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's it's gonna hurt. Yeah, sorry, it really is gonna hurt. Did we um, take fall damage on the way up? <laughs> No, you don't. When I'm not that much of a ceiling? dick. You will take full damage on the way down. There will be a total, um, a total fall damage taken from this. <laughs> this could yeah, kill Graf. <laughs> oh, no. I did heal myself a Let little bit just, earlier. Double check. Double check. Yes. Um, at the beginning of your go, the uh, Graf switch... Uh, stops and you guys hit the deck. God damn it! So Kraft just kind of runs over there, goes up, and then just down. <laughs> yes. Uh, God damn it! What is it with you to full damage? Two damage. A whole two damage each. I fucking hate full damage. Just sucker. Destroy. Whatever. You two take pride damage. All right. Your face first <laughs> on the floor. Hey, Ivory says you'll go. How far out are they? Uh, they're still only about 15 feet because uh, they haven't had a chance okay. to move yet. All right. Ivis doesn't do ranged very much, but he does have a ranged thing that he can do. Uh, <gasps> on the side of his uh, rapier holster, he has like a little tube uh-huh. and he pulls it out. And uh, alongside of it, he pulls a dart out and he's going to use his <laughs> poison ability to shoot a poison dart at them. Okay. Okay. Uh, proficient, yeah. You're proficient with blowguns. Yeah. Sure. I'm pretty sure those are considered simple weapons. Yeah. So would they're like a be. proper simple weapon, aren't they? Uh, 20 plus dex, uh, dex, yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah, this is, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Uh, you miss. Yeah, it's a 13. <laughs> so. Yep, this matter, this dart yeah. just goes completely wide, like in the darkness that's uh, surrounding Ron and his uh, two new companions. Uh, it goes off and nobody knows where it will land. Perhaps it will fall and take out a wild buffalo or something. Who knows? Um, <laughs> it got a fell on that one. Okay. Um, over to uh, Tabaxi and Friend. Uh, <laughs> the winged tiefling looks down at his companion. Um, as he's like struggling to get uh, a roan off of his shoulders um, and he looks down at his tabaxi friend and you hear the tabaxi friend go no please don't as he lets him go <laughs> that's one less wait for this thing to deal with um, okay he's down he's out and he's going to try and break free from the grapple off And he does not. Um, he tries to fly a bit further away. He gets to maybe like five, six more feet, but your weight was a lot. <laughs> um, and he, he, you know, he had to unceremoniously drop his friend. Um, okay. It's, he can't really do anything. Um, he used his action to let go of his buddy. I think he should be penalized for that. Um, Aron. Hi. Hi. Okay, so. <laughs> Ron told him not to do it. He did it. So, uh, <laughs> gun to the back of this guy's skull. He's just going to pull the trigger. Okay, go for it. Um, I think I may have disadvantage, right? Because it's a ranged attack. Yes, anyway. because you are like super. I uh, like, generally, I don't mind too much because, like, especially if it's like a short bow or a pistol or something, like, short range, you're really not going to miss them. But big, unwieldy mm-hmm. weapons like sniper rifles and long bows, then I'd say be some sort of disadvantage. Um, yeah. You do have a big ass gun, you don't have a pistol yet. So, yeah, I'd say it's yeah. disadvantage because it's unwieldy. Okay. Wow. That's unfortunate. That is an eight to hit. That, uh. For whatever reason, like your gun is just too big and this thing keeps like dodging around it. And by the time you pull the trigger, its head is just out of the way. Um, You score no damage to it, my dude. That's fine. You'd be disadvantaged anyway because you're in a grapple. Well, not if I I used a melee attack. Yeah, if you used a melee attack, it'd be fine. Anyway, carry on. Um, I'm going to bonus action shield of faith myself. Okay. Uh, Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of a liberty on this one because don't, you... Don't you impose his bullshit on me. No, I'm not imposing his bullshit on you. Um, I'm not I'm, religious. Exactly. So you, technically you shouldn't be able to cast Shield of Faith because it's it on my list. you to have faith. All right. Can you can you give me a decent RP reason why a person who doesn't have any faith in God has a Shield of Faith? Because it's a poorly named spell. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's supposed to be a thing, which is why... Would you like me to tweet at Mike Merles and say, why did you do this? Uh, I very much would, but I've already had a thought to how to reskin it. Basically, what happens is, is that you have a very small device somewhere which you have imbued with this idea of protection. Uh, this magical thing. And as you give it a hearty thwack, uh, like these kind of like scaly things just reach out across your chest and like kind of protects a good portion of your body. I like that bit. Me too, because, yeah, Shield of Faith makes no sense for your character it's like, whatsoever. <laughs> I'm wearing a portable Gungan shield generator. You get a, you get an exo shield um, for a very short amount of time. That's that's your thing. Uh, it still does cost spells, by the way. I'm not we're not getting over that mechanic. Um, Graf. Yes. Uh, Graf is uh, lying on the ground, probably like hands extended, just like, fuck, just, okay, no, okay. He's going to get up. How far away did you say that these people have now made it? Uh, say about 20 feet at the most. 20, 21, fo- 21 feet. What? Graf. Graf. <laughs> That's the look of dumbness on your face right there. What and are you doing? I'm going to draw the dumbness back. Uh, Graf just like looks around him for a, like a suitable throwable rock. No. Graf is going to pick up the rock he's been playing with with the catapult. A very suitable throwable <laughs> rock. <laughs> okay, all right. Improv thrown weapon. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, what do I roll for that? I'll admit that. Uh, dexterity. You can use your strength. Uh, yeah, you can use your strength because you're a you. Okay. Uh, it's a thrown weapon. So, yeah. 
I rolled a 13. So basically... Hmm? Okay, that does not hit. Oh. No, my rock! Oh. Uh, Ron, you just see this rock just like fly past you and hear like Griff's sad voice. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ivoris. What do you want to do? Guy's not dead yet. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys haven't even hurt him, I don't think. Shit. I shot him once. That was well, it. That was it. It wasn't a lot of damage. All right. Blow dart. It was, it was like 50. Iris isn't very confident with his blow dart. Um, seems like something you guys don't see very often is Iris blow darting people. <laughs> but uh, that's what he's going to do. All right. So what you're saying is Iris needs lessons on blowing. Uh, huh. That's a uh, 19. Oh, that hits. You have to use your tongue. Thanks. Use your tongue. Okay, that's gross. All right, so that flies out across and it hits him for nine uh, poison damage. You can feel him getting sluggish beneath you as you see this kind of like darts like embed itself into like the lower portion of one of its legs. Um, it's real sluggish. It's, it's going to be going down any second. Um, the... Oh, I need to... It's run as Tabaxi, but it's not as a flying creature. The creature tries again to break free of its grapple. Um, uh, post check. Nine. It also got a nine. What was your strength? I have a plus zero. Okay, then it breaks free. <laughs> That's unfortunate for it. That's unfortunate. Um, as it, yeah, it's basically going to use its action and its uh, bonus, uh, because uh, assassin, uh, to do the extra dash dodge move thing. So it goes out 60 feet. Uh, oh, it disengaged? Fuck. No, it did the dash, so you can get opportunity on it. If you have a okay. melee weapon. Uh, I have a dagger, or I could hit it with the, the gun. Up to you. I think I'd rather just hit it with the dagger. Okay. I don't want to damage the gun. Hit. 17 to hit. Oh, thank Christ. Uh, as it tries to get away, you basically just stab the thing in the back of its neck, and as it tries to fly away, you gouge. You can't suddenly say it's non-lethal. You didn't say before. I didn't think I was going to kill it. <laughs> doesn't matter. You're like, if you're going to do something non-lethal, you need to say it's non-lethal. You're flying 500 Dying. feet in the air or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter how non-lethal it is. That dude's dead. You put a gun to the <laughs> back of his it. head a second ago and pulled the trigger. Yeah. How is that going to be non-lethal? <laughs> ah, I you really need to declare non-lethal before. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus, man. Like, okay. So... You stab your blade in the back of its neck, and as it flies away, it basically cuts itself along its spine. Um, and you see it down into the ground, out of your view. You guys are finally done and finally out of combat. <laughs> Griff's gonna pick himself up and, like, dust off. I lose my rock. <laughs> Iris, did you see that? Did you see it? Your rock? What? No, they've showered me in gold. I kicked so much ass. Two of them ran away and one of them just died on the spot. Ibis rolls his ass. The, the, the evidence are right there. I killed one of them and the other two ran away. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good job. <laughs> so what are you three doing now? <laughs> Landing. <laughs> yes. Landing is definitely possible. <laughs> well, that went well. Yeah, you said we're 450 up, right? Yeah. Can I see the body of the winged tiefling on the ground? Yeah, dark vision, right? Mm-hmm. I noticed you 60 dark. Yeah. And then another 30 dim. I guess it's just a 60. Yeah. No, she'd only see like 90 feet down. Okay. No, yeah, I, th yeah I think it's just a bit too far out. I mean, you could fly down. I mean, <laughs> stairs yeah. mean nothing to you. <laughs> they don't. I'm good. Okay. Well, now what? Ivers is kind of like scratching his head and he kind of sits down and starts going through his gold, I guess, to try to figure out if he still has all his gold or what the fuck. All of your gold is still there, my dude. All right. So, did the old tiefling lady tell you where the scroll is? Uh, did she? No, she We're didn't done. get a chance to finish. She like, didn't. basically, okay. you left before she could finish us. But basically, you left as she was casting her spell. Um, 
looking over there, you can see that the the blue glow from her office is gone, and she's just patiently waiting at the uh, the other end of the temple. I don't think she wants to get involved in the fray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait here. I'll be right back. And Iris goes over there. Uh, puts his puts his sword away. Everything's done. Non hostile. <laughs> Uh, she kind of like looks at you, and uh, looks at the kind of remains across the top of the uh, the bargain, and uh, she nods again. Says, "The temple is half a day south, then another half a day southeast." That's it. That should be enough to find it. Be careful. It doesn't like lies or deception. Doesn't like deceivers. As you would expect from the god of knowledge. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Keep a lookout for... And Ivers looks back at all the blood and everything. (laughs) Uh, Keep a lookout for trouble. I will do my best. but I know my end is soon. I am happy with this. Good luck in your journey. Iris's ears do that like slightly confused cat thing. He doesn't say <laughs> anything, but they kind of fold a little bit. And uh, yeah. he just nods and walks away. Okay. Is there anything you guys want to do before you leave? Are you going to book in for a night or are you going to try and head out now? Ref wants to loot the, um, the scowly tiefling. Uh, they have three daggers on them. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to keep that. I can throw that shit. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> you're a useless graph. <laughs> I threw my A rock does rock. nothing. I paid the biggest price of everybody in this fight. I lost something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, his self-respect went years ago. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Uh, you find uh, you find three three daggers and you find six silver. That's like a jackpot for you. Yeah, it is. Oop. So uh, no, like uh, Bethesda style piece of note that tells me exactly why these guys were here and what they were doing in case I accidentally killed them before talking to them. Funnily <laughs> enough, we uh, know. Funnily enough, uh, no. Oh, <laughs> crazy. These these villains are surprisingly intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, not an assassin walking around with like a handwritten signed letter by the contractor. <laughs> I here named Steve want you to kill here named Pete. <laughs> uh, I, I should totally take this with me on the attack. Yep. Can't yep. see that. Girl. Nope, nothing that. You just find three daggers and six silver. All right. If found, please return to <laughs> the pub. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are you guys uh, staying here for the evening or are you guys going to head off uh, under the cover at night? You have been traveling for most of the day. I'm, I'll float that up. Oh, Graf wants to sleep. <laughs> Same. Iran is bleeding. <laughs> oh, God. So yeah. badly. <gasps> oh, God. What kind of bad priest is this? Uh, she wants this over and she's going to heal you before you get any worse. Like, <laughs> this is the worst priestess in the world. Oh, you're bleeding all over my temple. Nah, carry on. No. She'll, she'll come over and, you know, put her hands upon you and heal you guys uh, enough so that you can get downstairs without, like, bleeding over everything or the risk of immediately dying if you fall over. Um, oh. Yeah, that would be... I appreciate that. that Thank be you. super dumb. Uh, it's quite okay. Um, what is your name? Aran. It is a pleasure to meet you. Good luck, also. Interesting uh, technology you have. All self-made. I'm not one for religion, but I do have at least a small amount of respect for your god. Although you do not have faith, I feel that Ogma would have a certain amount of respect for you also. Yeah. Oh. I should hope so. I had to fix this shit in the other temple. <laughs> take a take a charisma check for me. Fourteen. She plays a hand on your shoulder, 
Um, and she says, he sees his good deeds, faith or not. May you have his blessings. And you feel a very faint tingle under her fingers. Olkma will remember this. <laughs> two of your two of your characters blessed by Ogma. <laughs> two characters. Two of your characters idiot. blessed by Ogma. <laughs> One day you'll find out what that does. <laughs> I will. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> okay. Right. Except both of my characters are blasphemous, anti-religious fucks. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, they don't always judge. I mean, of course, you know, they may not last much longer, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> you should find a religion. No, thanks. Have you seen what Tyrannus has been doing with his magic? <laughs> he was on the ceiling. <laughs> I don't need that. Thank you. <laughs> I do it not think that shit gold. my life right now. <laughs> it did also it did rain work. gold. <laughs> it did. I did make that happen. Hmm. All right. Okay. Well, I need to put on my notes that Ogma will remember this. I summoned a small creature that stole for me. <laughs> <laughs> a mythical creature that doesn't exist on this continent. <laughs> we'll we'll have a conversation about it someday, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Um, okay, so as you guys basically toodle your way back downstairs um, to, you know, chill out, recuperate, all this good stuff, um, uh, but uh, helps you find places to stay where you've stabled up the horses and the uh, attached in. Um, as you guys pass a restful, peaceful night. Hooray. Hooray, long rest. Yeah, they're going to have to try hard to keep me down. My indomitable will will carry me on for the eternities. But until then, I want to thank the supporters who help us keep this game going. And I want to thank the namers that gave us name. Tass the Indomitable by T. Clay J. Neopolitan by Riot. Case Lens by Fortello. And Uthbert by Thursday. A kid better give me my horse back or I'm going to kick his ass. If you want to see more information about whose ass I'm going to kick, go meet us on Twitter, at TLDPod. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else to write. No. Let me see. I can't read. Uh, V, you break my heart when you don't do my ice cream thing. V. You have Neapolitan. What more do you want now, man? V, I didn't come up with that one. It's good, but I didn't come up with that one. We have one of our wonderful patrons to thank for that. <laughs> so good. No, we are not. The, no, no. Hey, 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 hey. Aethor? Yes. If you went over to a buddy's house <laughs> and they had a cat named, <laughs> would that be crazy? <laughs> would it be really crazy if someone named a cat? No, but like, no. The- <laughs> It's just a no. name. It's like yeah, naming your, exactly. your your cat like David. Like <laughs> well, ask Arch. Hey Arch. Hey. If you went over to a friend's house. Oh my god. Uh-huh. And they had a cat no. named yep. No. Okay. Would that be weird? No. I mean it's an unusual name, but I don't know. Yes. You see? CV, it's fine. I'm not it's saying it's so good. It's, it's so good. No, it's so good. No, no your obsession with ice cream ends at Neapolitan. Okay, no, that wasn't mine. Give me this <laughs> one, B. Give me this one, just the one. <laughs> don't don't give him just the one, because then he's gonna ask for more. No, I know. one per this character. Is, this is what I've learned. I said yes <laughs> to the beanbag chair, and suddenly Ivorus happened. <laughs> hey. Uh, granted, like 60 episodes later, but then, bam, Ivor has happened. 